All right, uh, gems have been banned from Gen 5 OU, thank God. And here I have with me Peng, who was a council member, instrumental in making that change happen. And he and I have opposing views on how Gen 5 OU should be tiered, or mostly opposing anyway. So we're here to argue, and uh, he has a British accent to make me sound like the dumb American that I am. So say hi. Yeah, hi guys, I'm Peng. Um... Yeah, just active, black and white, uh, community member, council member, um, you'll see me around Discord server and stuff like that. So I've been playing since about 2009 or so, um, gone through several retirements and currently sort of like a midway stance between actually playing and being semi-retired in the minute. But um, yeah, regarding gems, we just dive straight into that? Yeah, go right ahead. Oh, this is also the inventor of Protect Terrakion, by the way, so... Had to, had to drop it in there. Yeah. Just, uh, I'm sure there'll be a few more things that we that we claim from sort of 2011, 2012 days. But, uh, yeah, so... So, gems, uh, yeah. Why were they a problem and uh, why were they gone? Uh, first of all, before you start, I just want to mention to any casual players listening that flying gem acrobatics was not at all a factor in this decision. Nobody was spamming... What would you even spam? Well, Gliscor, I guess. But yeah, that was not a problem. What were the problematic aspects of gems? Yeah, so kind of in short, uh, Pokemon like Volcarona and Cloyster went through a period of barely being used at all because they seemed to be like quite high risk Pokemon. Uh, and then all of a sudden, kind of after an uptick of like loads of sand, bulky offense, sand bounce teams and SPL, people realized that uh, gems on things like Volcarona, Bloom, Cloyster, uh, Latios and things like that. Often Even Dragonite, really, really. That one always gets overlooked, but I think it's so dumb. <laughs> yeah, no, it's really stupid. Yeah. It, um, it basically, it's these like really high power but low drawback um, item options to so some things that are already scary without even needing an item at all, really. So, um, and you can you kind of contrast that to other generations where things like Life Orb would be your best option, or, like choice items. The risk reward of gems by comparison is like really, really skewed, and some of the calcs they allow you to. To get away with and something like the wall breaking power on some of these things is absolutely absurd so um i so I, I wrote up the initial thread on smoke on about kind of the gems ban um when we were first proposing it as a suspect and you, you can go through that to see some of the calcs that are really really crazy but it's things like um you know obviously the bug gem for corona beating tarantula that's the obvious one but things like ice gem cloister um ko and keldeo and magnazone um, it's like really, really bad because if you're using Magnezone or Keldeo on sand, that's you already doing more than most people to beat Cloister on sand. And then it has, it has an item with like basically no drawback that beats those anyway. So it just it, it it just made the entire idea of defensive counterplay in the tier like really, really ruined, especially on that sort of stab side. So uh, two ca common counterpoints. Uh, number one, why can't you just scout the gem? Number two. Aren't these basically just Z moves, which are not banned? So start with the first one. Why can't you just scout the gem? Uh, <laughs> that's going to come down to prediction every time, right? Like it's as much as you can say someone can pivot around to burn the gem. Um, look, the, the counter argument is that if, if someone sees that coming, they just get a second quiver dance as you switch or a second shell smash. Um, kind of combine that with the fact that hazards make that sort of pivoting thing really, really difficult and. Black and white is still not a tier where spinning is like super, super easy. Hazard removal is kind of tough, especially against high profits. Where are you finding those free turns to spin with like Trill or something? Mm -hmm. um, so, so that's that's one of the major points there. Um, I, I would also add that it's not as easy because these attacks are so strong that nothing yeah. really takes them. Like if yeah. you're expecting a Dragon Gem on Dragonite, you switch and to what? There's very little that and you're most of the time you're just going to be giving up KOs, and yeah. so even if the gem user itself doesn't beat you, then you've already lost. Like if you're scouting ice versus rock gem on cloister, which is a big guessing game by the way, you can say, oh, you predicted yeah. from team preview, which is really first of all not exact science, uh, far from it. And uh, number two, then they can the other player can know that's what you're going to be expecting and use it for another reason. So, you can't guess it right, and even if you're switching around trying to burn the gem, trying to scout it, whatever, then you're just taking more damage and switching around and getting destroyed anyway. So even if you manage to survive the gem user, then they're probably gonna... 
beat you with something else because you just can't sustain that much damage from one Pokemon, let alone a whole team of them. And that brings us to the second point, which is, of course, that when you can only use one Z move per game and you can just stack as many gems as you want. Yeah, exactly. I, I, th- I think just to go back to the first point a little bit as well, like wh- whatever you pivot to, if it's capable of taking a hit, it also needs to be able to deny that Pokemon getting a second setup turn. Mm-hmm. Right. So, for example, like you may go into Taranta to bait the plus one Bug Gem Volcrona, but whatever, whatever you go into to take that first Bug Buzz, if it gives Volcrona a second Quiver Dance, it doesn't matter. So, like your options in that regard are like just really, really bad. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, that sort of defensive switching, it just doesn't really. It's not really. And Titar yeah. is taking more and more rocks damage every time it switches in and out. Yeah. So you're just falling into regular Bug Buzz range. So. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Uh, so, so the second point you raised was about aren't they just Z moves? And I think that there's yes and no. I I, I don't really like the comparison because I don't think we really need to compare things across gens. For people that know, I don't know. I'm I'm an entirely a black and white main. I've not played a game of any other generation since I came back to play at the start of the pandemic. I've not touched anything. Mm-hmm. Um, and so like, I, I I fundamentally know how Z moves work, but the, the comparison to me is just not really worth it in terms of you can use more than one on a team in terms of gems mm-hmm. uh in addition to like the actual calculation for the power is a bit skewed G- um, z moves have those kind of weird buffs on um accuracy and moves they go through and protect like and stuff like that actually yeah. you, could, you, you could even argue that uh gems are even stronger than uh z moves in that regard because yeah. that you can't protect on them but this I, I agree that it misses the point and i don't bring up the I bring up that point because that's a common uh, rebuttal to, oh, we, we can handle Z-moves. First of all, we barely handled Z-moves. Uh, some would say yeah. we didn't really handle them at all. Second of all, if you have to bring up a, another generation, then that's just a, showing a lack of points. But these are this, that's also why I mentioned the flying gem acrobatics thing, because I know the we know the common arguments used in response, and this yeah. is why they don't work. This is why gems are gone. Yeah, no, exactly. Like, like both of those things, I've, I've, things I've seen in sort of in your comment section or in like on um, what's his name, Freeze Eye. Yeah. Comment, comment I mean, they, they, but the thing, thing is, they even up. get thrown around in the forums. You know, like you yeah. go back to all those years of, hey, maybe a uh, chlorophyll or sun or Doug or whatever is too broken. Yeah, but I like it when there's three weathers in OU instead of just two. So, uncompetitive yeah. arguments come from all over the place. But those are those are the really common ones. Um, yeah. I, yeah, I do think the, the, the main way they're different, and the reason gems are probably worse than Z moves, or like better, like worse than the metagame, but stronger, is the fact you can use more than one. And mm-hmm. it's super common to have two or three on Smurf. Some Aerodactyl teams can run legitimately four. You yeah. Can run. For anyone who doesn't know, Smurf is a hyper offense team which uh, consists yeah. of Rock's lead, it doesn't even matter which rocker it is, then Starmie to spin, Volcarona, Breloom, Scizor, and Dragonite. And on that team, you can, you should, or you should have before the ban, Volk, Breloom, and D-Knight. Like, what else are you going to run besides gems? I mean, you can make an argument for, like, Lum, D-Knight, or whatever, but the whole point is that you're trying to break through stuff with Hyper Offense, and gems make you go from difficult to play around, but reasonable. Without gems, Volcarona and D-Knight and Breloom and Cloyster and Latios are all, to name the five biggest abusers, they're all still major, major threats, but you can still pivot around them. This takes Pokemon that are already really difficult to deal with and just makes them downright unfair sometimes. Yeah, exactly. So so one of the points I kind of made in that thread as well was regarding uh, like neutral coverage and how that interacts with gems. What gems fundamentally doing on something like a Cloyster Rock Blast is giving stab to cloister for a turn mm-hmm. um and as soon as you start messing around with that like just the very idea of defensive counterplay no longer exists versus things that have like semi-decent attacking stats and any sort of high base power neutral move so that's the kind of thing with like fighting gem um landris for example into skarmory like that that's not a pokemon i would consider broken um but that interaction doesn't feel particularly healthy the fact that you can actually run max max hp defense on skarmory and still lose to like Landorus T-sets. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, technically Smackdown and Gravity and whatnot, but uh, yeah, and the point is know, taken, it, yeah. It is, yeah, exactly. Um, but th- th- it's just really, really rough. And then things... Like, like, uh, like, I said that people used to run more was SD Dragon Gem Garchomp, and even yeah. Skarmory can't stand up to, not coverage, but just 
outrage. So if Skarmory can't stand up to the boosted physical dragon move, then, you know. Yeah, for sure. Well, like, like staying on the neutral attacks topic, things like uh, quick attacks, Scizor can legitimately run normal gem, which lets it run a <laughs> KO tentacle after rocks. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> like, so it, and uh, what else? Psychic gem Volcarona can... Oh, that one's so stupid. That... Just stuff like that. Ice gem Thunderous, you know, it's really, The really, CL really special, cool. yeah. CL was telling uh, me how broken Ice gem Thunderous was years ago, and I should have listened. Yeah. But, like, the Psychic gem Volk one is hilarious, not just because of Tanacruel, but because it does other dumb stuff like uh, Dragonite and, yeah, uh, and Terrakion. Just, Ter really Sand Terrakion is always like, all right, Terrakion's a beast, and it checks Volk. And then it's like, well, you know, not so much anymore. I was running yeah. pa Payapa Berry on it, not just for Alakazam and Reuniclus, but legitimately for Psychic Gem Volcarona. Yeah, yeah. And I, I think an important point is that for for these sort of Pokemon to get anything near that power level, the next best thing they'd have to use would be Life Orb. And what we've seen is that Life Orb is a big nerf on these. We've seen that in like even just a few weeks of Gem Ban. Um, Life Orb Cloister is fine, but like it gets like three turns now rather than seven to mm -hmm. win games or. Um, yeah, Life Orb or Corona the same way. Like, like Lumvolk seems to have been the set that has overtaken. Life Orb is just such a downgrade in a, in a, in a, in a meta game where like sand is also really, really prevalent. Um, it, it just turns that it allows you to now pivot around things. Like we were talking earlier about pivoting around things like Bug Gem or Corona. And it has to run Life Orb. That's now a legitimately viable option because anything that tanks a hit is forcing to take what sixteen percent damage mm -hmm. um, just on residual. Um, but Je gems don't have that. Like the, things has had stupid longevity with that one turn nuke. Um, just yeah, really, really stupid. And uh, another, the final common argument that this one's been thrown around on Smogan too, and it's like, well, why is it a, uh, why is it fundamentally bad for Pokemon to be able to destroy their counters? Isn't that all about what Pokemon's all about? You know, luring your checks, and you know, why is it bad that these teams aren't able to counter or whatever? Uh, so, I have ranted about this so many times, so just my, my quick version is that obviously you can't counter every Pokemon all the time, otherwise we'd be playing a very stupid game. But yeah. uh, the whole point of gems, the fundamental idea of luring your counters is not bad. That's, that's actually a very healthy thing. Uh, it takes away complacency, pushes the metagame forward, all that stuff. The problem is with gems is that it invalidates everything through sheer power alone and, or nearly everything, just in case someone wants to be pedantic. It invalidates nearly everything through sheer power alone and that's really unhealthy. Uh, I'm yeah. sure. I'm sure that that can be understood. Uh, just because a lot of people go, oh well, you just want your sand teams to be safe, and to that I would say, well, the whole reason, and we'll get into this uh, for the topic of this video proper, but the whole reason why sand has been used so long is because it's one of the few ways that you can reliably actually counter things. Like, what's the other big playstyle in the meta game? It's rain, right? Rain can't even handle Latios, so. Exactly. If you're going into a big tournament game, and you should be able to handle you know, the Pokemon on the opposing team, right? And Sand yeah. generally gives you the best option. So if Sand can't handle these Pokemon, then really nothing can. Because yeah. the whole, it goes from, oh, well, you need to be able to pack a check to this Pokemon. And then you suddenly realize, wait, I can't pack a check to this Pokemon because there are none. Or, at the very least, none that you can reasonably run on the same team while still being good against the rest of the metagame. Like, yes, if I ran a team of nothing but T-Tar, uh, Heatran, and Blissey, and, you know, throw in a Scarf Garchomp, just, then yeah, I would never lose to Volcarona. You're right. But, you know, throw in a Keldeo there if you want. But I would also have a terrible team in general. And that's the reason why we have clauses and try to tier the metagame in general. So that you can make teams that handle the metagame and actually play battles without uh, having problems with team matchup, i.e., I really hope I don't face that Pokemon. Now, every team yeah. has its preferences, like, oh, man, this team is a little soft against Tornadus, but there's a different... But Tornadus also has a lot of weak points that you can attack, even if you are weak to it. Uh, whereas with these Pokemon, their setup moves are, and their uh, attacking moves in conjunction, are so widespread and difficult to stop that if you 
can't check them with the Pokemon that usually check them, then you're not checking them at all, and then it leads to a very unhealthy case of picking and choosing, picking your poison with what you want to be weak to. Uh, so if you want to expand on that. Yeah. Well, we're just, just to, go, to go back a little bit to like the luring point that we were talking about. Um, I, I think that that's a really, really good point about how people, like obviously luring is a big part of the game. We don't want to remove that. We don't want to have, yeah, teams where, or a meta game where it's everything so passive and nothing can break anything. I think those meta games arguably do exist in some formats and they're generally not very well received at times, um, mm. particularly among like the casual player base. But, um, oh, but black and white is too far on the other spectrum. There needs to be like a healthy mid ground where things have the options to break through a kind of traditional counterplay slightly, but not be able to like outright just remove them at, and, and only have to give up an item slot for it rather than having to give up an item slot and a coverage move or two coverage moves or or something else or something. And I, I think I think that's really the difference. Like we're comparing sort of like DPP hidden power to like cloister ice gem icicle spear, which is just like almost ridiculousness. And there, there were people remember in the thread someone was saying the gem ban it removes um, creative counterplay because now I can't use fire gem, hidden power, fire Latios <laughs> to be Ferrothorn. It's like, yes, but you can still use hidden power, fire. You're not entitled to have like the 50% boost on top of that. Like hidden power, fire, Latios is already super, super good at doing that. Mm-hmm. It's when you're doing the boot, like the, the gem on top of that, the, these power levels are insane and it goes beyond luring and just into defensive counterplay, like flat up not existing in the tier. Mm-hmm. Um, what was the, the second point you said there? Uh, oh, I think it was just a, the fundamental idea of you should be able to handle the things that exist in the tier to some extent. Uh, this yeah, is why, this yeah. is why I made that uh, slightly hyperbolic, but not really claim that Gen Five Ubers is more balanced than OU because everything in Ubers can be checked by something else in Ubers. Uh, whereas in OU, then it's like, well, Cloister kind of shreds everything, so. Yeah, I, th- I think kind of further to that, there were a lot of comments after the gem ban went through. Uh, kind of the very, very typical black and white tearing stuff where people came out and said, oh, yet another ban that just makes strong, uh, just makes sand stronger. Um, <laughs> which admittedly has been like a common trend, but for the reasons you've outlined, it's because sand is kind of the safe it, place to it, you don't it, want to If like there's no sa- if sand it. isn't a viable option, then yeah. the metagame is just chaos. Because as yeah. soon as you, you notice this with every single team that does not have Tyranitar gets shredded by Latios. I mean, you can say, oh, we'll run Scarf. So every rain team will run Scarf Scizor, and every weatherless team will run Pursuit uh, Scizor. Uh, and that, first of all, really healthy dynamic. Second of all, because Scizor is just so ironclad against HP Fire Latios, which it already likes to run for a Pokemon called Ferrothorn. So it's just very unhealthy how it's T-Tar, oh, well, Weatherless and Rain can run Scizor, and, which also gets destroyed by Surf, by the way, in Rain. So the point being that Latios is very broken, and since, and this is going to get to the heart of this debate we're going to have, where uh, I, when I was getting back into black and playing Black and White seriously, then I was like, you know what, I, I don't like building in this tier, but I am not going to just lose to the most common threats in the tier, Latios, Alakazam, Reuniclus. So I'm going to run T-Tar because the alternative is running bad Pokemon or losing to these top tier threats. And I think it's ridiculous that you should have to choose between countering these top tier threats and losing... Or let me uh, put that a different way. Running one Pokemon to handle these top tier threats... And if you don't run that Pokemon, then they're just going to bowl you over because the pool of options for dealing with them is so limited. Yeah, uh, I mean, so- again, that that was the crux of the gems issue was mm-hmm. that um, Cloyster and Volcarona are like, really good at punishing um, sort of the safe sand team. So for, so for those who don't know, like basically the reasons to run sand a lot of the time is that they have typically the best sort of uh, options into Latios, Scald, and Spikes, which are really the and, three And Rain. Like, rain is a big one. Like, as, as rain, soon as yeah. it, a weatherless team against sand is fine, a weatherless yeah. team against rain is ridiculous. Yes, yeah. exactly. Um, so it's like the, 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 there's a reason everyone gravitates towards sand a lot of the time, and why things like the Reuniclus teams are up, up so good. Um, and Gliscor and Landorus and things like that, 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 there's a reason they're used. And Cloyster and Volcarona have like a really important place in the metagame to 
make you think twice about using that literally every single game. I think that's really important. And so that in and of itself is fine. That, there's nothing wrong with Volcarona punishing Sand because I always used to say, look, if your Sand team loses to Volcarona, that's just not a good team. But losing yeah. to Volcarona and losing to Volcarona equipped with gems are very different things because yeah, it's exactly. not just that the Sand team can't handle it. It's that pretty much nothing can handle it. Yeah, for sure. I think it's just that the punish was too strong. No, like, nothing good, rather. Like, people will say, oh, just use Chansey. And it's like, and I realize there's a replay of uh, Blissey on the screen right now, but uh, all I'm saying is that Ladio should be winning this game because it literally gets the trick off onto the... Bl Never mind. Irrelevant. I wasn't going to uh, comment on the replays. Point being, uh, you, Blissey and Chansey stuff is not good. <laughs> and... It's uh, that's generally a mention or a sign that whatever Pokemon you're dealing with is not healthy for the metagame when you can only counter them by using bad stuff. Like to draw a start slightly ridiculous comparison, but one that was actually made. Uh, do you remember when Genesect was in OU and everyone was like, "This Pokemon has no counters," and people were yeah. unironically going. Uh, that's literally not true. It's literally countered by Rotom Heat, who also literally counters Tornadus Therian, and yeah. the, missing the point of, yeah, but then you're using Rotom Heat. So, you know, and to draw another ridiculous comparison, uh, Kyogre in Gen 4 is... Ky is ugh, Jesus Christ. Kyogre in Gen 4 is countered by any UU team with a Water Absorb Quagsire or a Ludicolo. So, if you drop Kyogre into UU, would you say, oh, well, you just need to use Quagsire and Ludicolo? Or do you say, hey, maybe the fact that this Pokemon is only countered by Quagsire and Ludicolo might be a little bit much? That's the whole reason why we have tiering. Everything has answers, counters, whatever you want to call them. I'm pretty sure Violet Porygon 2 technically countered Mega Rayquaza. So, it's yeah. more about the effect it has on the metagame as a whole, as opposed to a single-minded, well, does it have counters or not thing. Yeah, exactly. And, and for, for, like, the, the issue with, with Volcarone and Cloyce is that if you were adequately preparing for Rain, Scald, Latios, and Spikes, all the things that sort of beat those Pokemon, so if, think like the classic Sandmons, you use them for a reason, right? You're trying to like negate your Spikes susceptibility, so you're using like Gliscor, Landorus, Rotom, Skarmory, or Excadrill. And then you want Skull Switch in, so you've got like Reuniclus, Celebi, Gliscor also, uh, Breloom. Like there's there's actually no good options into uh, uh, Gastro as well, obviously. There's like no good options into Falkorn and Cloyster there. So it's a case of like those were just too good at punishing, punishing the, people. Yeah, then you have the messed up rock, paper, scissors matchup dynamic where you're, yeah. yeah. That, that, that's exactly it. And what I'll say is that in post gen metagame, things seem to be better because you don't now like automatically kind of lose games off the back of one bat of, of giving something one free turn. It feels a lot better. Um, mm -hmm. Cloyster and Volcaro are still really, really good. You can still see somebody who, uh, like if you're preparing for a tournament game and you see someone who like really spams some of those magic card teams, like Volcaro and Cloyster are still super potent in them. But th there's no longer this aspect where whenever there's ending Gliscor, you now win with Cloyster. That, that's now not a d dynamic that really exists to the same extent, whereas it kind of did, um, kind of did before. Uh, not obviously not like hundred percent, but but close enough to the point where that th they were too good at punishing this safe team building. Um, and yeah, that, that, and that's 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 a general stance that I've got. Like I I don't think you should be auto losing games because you use Landorus T or Gliscor. Because as soon as that's the case, then you just aren't allowed to counter anything. Because as yeah. soon as you stop using Lando T and Gliscor, then you're going to start losing to Garchomp and Terrakion and other stuff. So it it has to be some sort of healthy give and take. Uh, yeah. yeah. So this brings us to the focal point of this debate. And I'm sure we'll be yelling and screaming at each other very soon. Uh, so uh, it'll be very polite. Uh, so, the basic idea is, Peng, well, I'll let him speak for myself. I personally believe the gem ban was necessary, 100%. But, I personally believe that more tiering needs to be done in Gen 5 OU. And I'll just quickly explain myself before letting him do the same. So, the basic idea, uh, it, Black and White 2 has had good metagames. Uh, and those good metagames are always inter... Uh, my, the ones I'm referring to are 2016, some points in 2017, 
And 2018, once we got rid of all the stupid Doug Trio stuff, uh, and Sandrush Excadrill as well, uh, once those were gone, then the tier was, you know, pretty good. But then what always happens is that some broken element of the tier pops up. And we mentioned, oh, why are there so many bands happening? Why are they all... Well, because there's a lot of broken stuff. Uh, and we'll get to why in a second. So what always happens is these decent metagames last for a little bit and then something broken, not even pops up. It's more like it reminds everyone it exists. It's like uh, I'm complaining about Reuniclus in 2015 and then people just stopped using it for no real good reason. They're like, oh, well, Excadrill is back. Excadrill can rapid spin. I guess Reuniclus is fine now, which was stupid. And I remember even in 2016, I was like, I'm really glad more people don't use Reuniclus. It's really good against these teams. Uh, and there's a Reuniclus on the screen right now, which is funny. So, and then eventually people realize, oh yeah, this thing's still actually really broken. So, you wind up having this temporary decent metagame, and then people remember, all right, Latios has no answers. Alakazam and Reuniclus together are obscene. And, you know, Thunder, Keldeo, Thunder is therein. So, in short... Uh, I believe uh, that in the current gen, this is not the fault of the current Black and White Council, by the way. Uh, uh, Kevin, give me specifics. Here. Yeah, I'm sure. getting to that. So in the current in start. in the current generation, we had a council which was forced upon the metagame because the well, I won't get into the why, but the current gen council was inept and didn't care. It was horrible. There was a, an actual council member who said, well, we have XY coming out in 10 months, so, and no one's going to care about Gen 5 then. Which, is, in 10 months, by the way. But as if that wasn't a terrible enough statement already. It could have been 10 days, and it would have been a horrible thing to say. But, so in addition to that, and all the... This is not meant to be a character assassination on those council members. They just shouldn't... This is a whole checks and balances of the Smogan tiering system, which... That could be its own rant. Point being, we inherited a terrible, terrible broken metagame. And we are trying to... With each ban, the, it's not just, Oh, well, this annoys my team. You know what annoys my sand teams? Hydreigon. Hydreigon is the worst thing. I hate facing that. Do I want to ban Hydreigon? No, because it's a balanced way of handling sand teams. The broken elements are broken pr pretty much all the time. So, uh, and they ha they don't have those same exploitive weaknesses that can reasonably be exploited. So, what I'm saying is that, yes, we at some points we have had pretty good metagames, but they're only ever pretty good. And they never last because we never ha address the root of why the metagame centers so much around T-Tar and sand teams and balance structures and whatnot. It's because uh, we have never addressed, first of all, the grievous mishap the community made by not banning Keldeo, uh, even though it had two chances to do so. Uh, and... Latios has continued... Latios was actually pretty overlooked during the current gen, but it has continuously proved itself to just be insane. Absolutely overbearing, ridiculous. And now I I've come to believe that even Thunder Therian is too much for the tier. I, it's, and that's actually a fairly common opinion among the community at large. So in conclusion, I, I think there's a lot of stuff that plagues the tier. Uh, Latios, Keldeo, Thunder Therian... I could get into a whole thing about Scald being dumb, but that might be... You know what? I'll, I'll stick with those three for now. Latios, Keldeo, Thunderous Therian. So, your stance. Okay. Um, just to clear up, my, my stance is not anti-ban on everything. Um, if, if I was, I, I wouldn't be on council. I would step down immediately, because there's no point people being on council who are just completely resistant to doing any sort of action at all. Um, no, that, make, that makes no sense. You need to at least be open to it if, if the community wants it. Um, my sort of stance is, I firstly, th there's a misconception around how the council works. Um, and basically, no matter what my personal stance is, we would not actually be able to ban anything without a huge amount of community support. Um, I think the biggest bit of evidence that points towards that is that we almost didn't even get gems or Volcarona banned. band. We were one vote away from literally nothing happening on that vote. Even which though, insane, even though uh, the all the insane, right, which is an absolutely ridiculous statement. 
Well, uh, sorry, uh, you cut out for a sec. Could you say that again? Okay, we were we were one vote away. Yeah. from taking no action on gems mm-hmm. or Volcrona. And the all the council wanted the gems banned, right? Yes. We were, we were five out of five unanimous. Yeah. So that's so, another thing that's important is that you know if we want to get into smoke and tearing bureaucratics, that even if the entire council, the supposed overlords, say, all right, well, gems are too much for the tier and everyone agrees, then they have to go through this whole process of trying to get anything done. So it's not just as simple as, why doesn't the council fix this? If it was, yeah. then we would not have had to jump through all the hoops we had to. Like, yeah, uh, for sure. To, to, get, I, I, to, yeah, to get stuff that's even obviously broken, like if you can believe all the hoopla we had to jump through to get Arena Trap, of all things, banned... So, it's something that people look at back on now. It's like, well, how was that ever in OU? And it's like, yeah, well, a lot of people who so-and-so. So, uh, yeah, sorry, I cut you off. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, I think it just comes down to, whilst it feels like a large number of people want Latios, Keldeo, Thunder is gone, there's always a very, very large, silent group of people who defend the status quo, mm-hmm. always. Um, even on gems, which seems to be... So, we went through, like three rounds of um just asking people people's opinions of like polling before we went to the vote and it was overwhelming in the first two polls that we did to ban gems and then someone said if we're going to vote on gems we should actually vote on volcaron at the same time because people may want to put front from the pokemon rather than the item and then as soon as we <laughs> did that and as soon as the voter pool was actually selecting all sort of thing it literally came down to one vote it was literally like a 51 49 in favor of banning, which is like absolutely crazy. So I think it's, it's important to bear in mind, be kind of aware of when you're in an echo chamber and be aware that just the people talking are always going to be the people who are pro ban. Mm-hmm. Um, and people who kind of like things the way they are often just don't get involved in the conversation. Mm-hmm. Um, that said, I don't think we would have the support to ban any of the things that you've said so far. Mm-hmm. Uh, Latios, Keldeo, or Thunderous, and that's that's not even my personal point of view. I'm talking about that. That's me talking about the logistics of doing it. We can only ban stuff if the if we get enough community support to actually try, mm-hmm. and then if we get an established pool of voters to vote in favour of banning that thing. Well, and there's a lot of it there because because what happens is I think a lot of people still don't enjoy black and white to like to the max, you know. <laughs> There are some people to say the least, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the, 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 there are some people who think it's great. There are probably like over half of people think there's issues, I would say. But they all think something else is, an, is, is the issue. And whilst they may say public to, pu- publicly to you, I, I would be in favor of any action to try and improve this. A lot mm. of people say that. When they actually come to vote, that doesn't happen. And I think the gem of all Corona ban was really frustrating from that point of view because there were people who said to us, you know, I hate Thunderous, but if you get a gems ban through, I'll, I'll, I'll vote for it. I'll vote, I'll vote, vote for gems. And then when they came to vote, they voted for no action. And I was like, what, what are you doing? <laughs> like, so people are... That is really a phenomenon fun. I can't explain at all. Yeah, I, I, yeah. So basically, p- people, people yell at the council a lot for not taking action, but really it's a very indecisive player base who very often change their mind on what the broken thing is from week to week. Mm. Um, for example, at the minute, Thunderous is having a hot moment. A lot of people talk about Thunderous being broken. Um, I could honestly get behind that. If it's like a sustained period where everyone is going, yeah, Thunderous is broken, and then we vote on it and it goes. I have absolute zero issues with that. I'm not sure it's... I, I wouldn't miss it. I, it's If I had to pick something, it would be the thing that I looked at, but I'm pretty confident that we would, even at this stage, we would not be able to take action on it. Like, I'm actually nearly certain. Just based on how that gem spam went. Mm-hmm. I think people just aren't actually yeah I, th- I think a large part of that is actually also sort of survivorship bias so the people that we the only way you can vote in these things is if you do well in tournaments and the people that do well in tournaments happen to be the guys who enjoy the tier and they enjoy the tier because they don't think things should be banned you know what i mean mm-hmm. which is a really good point point. and yeah. there's, there's guys like you 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 would be a qualified voter in black and white but because you hate the tier so much you no longer play you can't vote mm-hmm. <laughs> which i think is fair but like it also it protects the status quo in that way. I know. I, um, it's... Yeah. So, so, so that that's kind of the complex situation, and the council can't really do anything when there's like a big heterogeneous group of voices that don't agree on things. If everyone 
is like 20% ban on a different thing, you get nowhere. Mm-hmm. Um, and let's be honest, there are probably seven or eight things that are suspect worthy in any other generation. Mm-hmm. So this is where I get to my point of view, which is that the larger player base or the people who are qualified and whatnot, then a lot of them have really... The the general... Let me, let me start from the beginning. I think that the general player base who expresses their opinions has really lost their right to have to have their voice mean anything simply because so much of it is so blatantly like i I realize that there's always going to be some element of subjectivity to tearing but some of it is so blatantly stupid and wrong as far as these things can be wrong and just go completely against how these things work and I, i just the idea that those people like uh, for the, let's take what you said about the gems no one has wanted to there's been like two guys max who have wanted to ban volcarona in the past uh let's say six years or around that literally nobody is going around saying volcarona is the thing that's ruining the tier then, as soon as the gems thing pop up, then we get the first wave of banned Volk I've seen in years. It's like, so do you really believe this, or was this just something you thought of now that gems might be on the table? So it's stupid things like that, or things like, gems are broken, let's bring back chlorophyll. Things like that. And this yeah. has been such a regular occurrence throughout the player base that I really believe in the you know full dictator approach. Um, so... <laughs> I mean, I, I, I'm not on board with the dictator thing. I, I don't think that's right, but we can come to that later. But yes, no, I, I agree with you. I think that there were people who were pro ban and for Corona, but that pool seemed to expand and get a lot louder once gems were on the table, almost mm-hmm. as if people didn't trust council to make any, any sort of action at all. Mm-hmm. And as soon as we said they would, they would say anything to stop the thing they like from getting banned, that being gems or something, or there were people who legitimately just think for Corona is broken even without gems and so on. So... Um, yeah, there's just pe- people just have interests in different places, and it can make the actual tiering process quite difficult. Hmm. Um, the most frustrating thing is the people who admit or are very loud about not liking things, mm-hmm. um, but then only want one specific form of action and refuse to do anything else. Mm-hmm. Um, and those, and uh, annoyingly, some of those guys are consistent suspect voters. And as long as they have the ability to vote, it's very difficult to to force through anything they don't like. Like for example. There are guys who are like really, really anti Latios. A couple. Um, you couldn't ban-, ban Thunderous T on their watch. There are a few guys who are really still anti Volcarona. You couldn't get rid of Drizzle while they're while they're around. Um, it's just it's just kind of how the way things are. So mm. I, th- I, th- I think that that's a really, really strong point. Do you want to get to my personal stance on things now? Because I've actually stayed Sh- very impartial talking about that. <laughs> sure, because uh, I was just going to say that. Oh, I think I lost it. Uh, but it was something about how. Uh, it'll come back to me. Go ahead. Yeah, so, so my personal stance is the only thing right now, like I said, if I had to pick something, it'll be Thunderous. Mm-hmm. Um, because it's... Firstly, because I do get like flashbacks to dealing with Thunderous Eye in black and white one. Um, and that was something we didn't even think twice about. Um, I know you shouldn't really make that comparison, but like I do get sort of like, oh shit, we've been through this before. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it, it is slowly shifting to becoming where it is now, like the number one rain threat. Your point about Keldeo being broken, I absolutely cannot get behind that at the minute because Keldeo has like really fallen off as like a rain uh, a rain threat in favor of just Thunderous being mm-hmm. um, being uncounterable with. Well, that, that's a player based thing, but we'll get to that. Also, the thing yeah. I remembered was um, uh, so since nothing you mentioned the thing about how nothing gets done. And uh, how because everyone wants to do something else, right? And that's exactly why I would suggest something like, well, clearly something needs to be done because the the outcry against the tier is so overwhelming that Mm -hmm. I think it would be better to just do something as opposed to just letting letting it fester. 
Uh, to go back to the example of last year, where we had everyone complaining, oh my god, this tier, it's still, after all this stuff, it's still, that, and then just nothing happened for so long, because nobody could agree, and that's what is going to happen when you rely on the opinions of people who normally, a lot of them don't care most of the time, and they aren't really informed enough and even those who are good players, and they still say you know, blatantly dumb stuff, like, all this broken stuff, let's bring back chlorophyll. Just like yeah. how in the current gen, then it was like, oh, Genesect and Lando I and Torn T and Deoxys Deer running around, let's free cure him black. You know, st- yeah. complete missing the stuff that's so missing the point that it, it is outright wrong. So when there's this, no one can agree on what uh, can be done, then you have to follow the vision of one person, and because it, then, otherwise, things are just going to keep getting worse. Yeah. So so I am kind of of the stance at the minute that nothing needs to be done, especially mm-hmm. in the short term, having just banned gems. I think things are a lot better. Mm-hmm. Um, look, I don't think Black and White's ever going to be this like sandbox metagame where you can create new archetypes out of thin air. I think it's always going to revolve around Skull, Spikes, Latios, mm-hmm. Suit. Brain. Um, I, I, I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. I think there are a lot of people who really, really hate that aspect because it's so different to like every other, every other OU generation. It's like it's so unique in that. And something I always point to about why Black and White is the way it is is it's the only generation where Latios is over, is overused, but there's no fairies. Mm-hmm. You know, it's also the only generation where there's Ferrothorn, but there's no Defog. <laughs> and it's also the only generation where there's. Um, Scald backed by permanent sand, which increases chip damage, or permanent rain to make the water types actually really hard to switch into. So I think th- th- those three things contribute to black and white being the way it is. Mm. I personally, at the moment, don't think that's actually a bad thing overall. I, th- I think black and white does just about balance itself. I think that's my it, current stance. It balances itself, but just yes. barely. Uh, it, it, like I, I don't think it's unplayable. For sure. With the gem ban, that I agree, it's playable. But my problem yeah. with Gen 5, is, for most cases, has never been that it's literally unplayable, bar a few metagames, but more that it's just barely playable. That it just... It, like, it's okay, but it could be so much better, and we don't take the action to make it that way, because yeah. we have to listen to the people who, by and large, don't know what they're talking about. Yeah, potentially. I mean, I I really like the the dynamics that black and white has, and I think it would lose a lot by taking out some of the things you're talking about, like rain. Yeah. I, uh... Yes. Like 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 yes. Okay. Like let let's get on the topic. Do you want to just go through like basic suspects one by one? Yeah. Let, let's start with rain because Alderon Alderon haunts us from beyond the grave. Yes, with it, think... yeah. yeah. You'll remember back in the day, I wasn't a big fan of Alderaan's proposal. Mm-hmm. Um, I am now, though, of the opinion that Reigns has been around such a long time. Like it, this is just black and white. Mm-hmm. Um, and if like if it really offends you that much, the stuff like Reigns in the tier, there mm-hmm. are there's no shortage of other meta games that don't have it. I know that's why I don't. That's why I play them hard. instead. <laughs> that? Yeah, uh, but but that's the thing. I I feel like. This is a Smogan Tournaments thing in general, and not just yeah. the Gen 5 OU metagame, but I feel like very often we settle, and we say, oh, well, it's good enough, as opposed yeah. to really trying to bring out the best in something. And and, re- and a refusal to look at Rain, even during the current gen, when it, people were you know swearing OU off forever, and running yeah. into tears, they swore they'd never play before, just to get away from the weather infestation, and we still never looked at it because the council was inept and said they were open to arguments and then never did anything because they were they didn't care and there was no way to make it happen if they didn't care because you couldn't yeah. get rid of them and all that all that other stuff and that has led us to and I personally don't like the idea that we are saddled with rain bringing the tear down forever because of the incompetence and lackadaisical don't leave me alone i don't care about this tier i'm in charge of attitude 
of those people. I don't think that the metagame should have to suffer for it. And I don't think that it makes it unplayable, but I mean... Uh, I don't think the bar needs to be that low. I think it should be, oh, it doesn't make the metagame unplayable, but it has this very undesirable, uncompetitive, broken, whatever you want to call it effect, because I do think things like Tentacruel and Rain and uh, Thunderous is obviously the biggest, but even something like Latios becoming even stupider than it already is. Yeah. I, I think it just does so many awful, awful things that, yeah. uh, and look at how much we have, I mean, people have uh, talked about how like in DPP, for example, I don't think we need a Banjirachi or Ironhead, but just as an example, people are like, oh no, we can't, uh, you know, we can't do a complex ban because that would be too hard or whatever. It's like, we have Drizzle Swim. <laughs> you know, we have the mother yeah. of all complex bans yeah. still running wild. I think we. Yeah, that, well, that was, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And everyone, everyone hates us. Why do, you, why do you do a second one? Um, yeah. That's the point. Like, it's. I, I, th I think. Yeah, like. Yes, I, uh, I respect the point i respect the i but black and white is in such a weird place where i'm not gonna call out anyone's point of view as being you know good or bad or right or wrong. like it's that mm -hmm. you can have any take on the black and white or you meta game and it's probably fine you can justify wanting to ban like any combination of things i can't really argue with it because it probably would lead to something playable you know mm -hmm. like not saying that what we have right now isn't playable but like mm -hmm. there, there are a lot of options that we could go in that would lead to you know something different that a different group of people mm -hmm. may like yeah and, and that's what frustrates me a little it's more it's not a what's best for the metagame debate it's a what's feasible within the you know bureaucratic landscape of smoke and tearing debate yes yeah. yes exactly and so what i would say is that it feels like there are a group of things that people want to ban that we pretty much cannot touch because we wouldn't be able to force a ban through and there are a group of things that you could argue to ban but actually have to convince people that they're broken you know, I think mm. those are two different lists. So on the first list, things that are like objectively really stupid, but have become the face of the tier, and th th they are the Latios. The tier. Latios really is hard. the biggest one. Those are those are Drizzle, mm. Latios, possibly Ferrothorn. Mm -hmm. I don't. I, 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 if someone wants to ban Ferrothorn, I respect that decision. Mm. I don't think we could ever ban Ferrothorn, Latios, Drizzle. Mm -hmm. I think they are black and white. Mm -hmm. I think that is the tier, and like. It's, it's 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 they are the fabric of the tier in the same way that the electrics are the fabric of gsc and snorlax mm -hmm. or you know various other things about old gen so I, I don't think you can just completely start fresh by removing these things so far after meta get like so far after the generation's over and i think obviously old gens play by different rules to new gens i know you hate that but like it kind of has to be that way because so much of our player base is people who don't play year round mm -hmm. and come back for spl like how many guys are playing spl who like barely actually touch the game in in the months in between or something and these are some of our top players mm -hmm. and we lose those if we completely change the tier to something absolutely unrecognizable from what's classic black and white it, it, it erodes a lot of the tiers history I would. Yeah, I we, fundamentally we, we, disagree yeah. with that uh, notion. Just because, yeah. look how well the Latios uh, unban worked for DPP. It's but that's still, yeah, yeah. but it's still hugely controversial, right? Like there are still loads of people who hate Latios and DPP. Yes, but so. but but those people are wrong. That's the whole point. <laughs> they are wrong. They are absolutely wrong. They're the same people who go, oh, well, uh, they used to go, oh, well, entry hazards are so broken in DPP. I hate this spin, pursuit, ghost-type prediction stuff. And then Clefable came along, put all that behind, oh, I hate Clefable, it's so broken. It's, oh, I hate pair spam because full paralysis, oh, Clefable doesn't get full paired either. It's the same, and these are the same people, oh, yeah, I don't know about Latias. Yeah, so... I, the thing is that we should not, and again, the council was in favor of unbanning Latias, or at least giving it a try, right? Not saying, like, the Latias is back forever. It was given a fair trial. And the whole point is, yes, there were people who said, okay, well, I don't like this. And we said, okay, well, too bad. I mean, okay, another uh, example. Remember when Salamence was banned in DPP and people lost their minds? I wasn't even around for the Garchomp ban, but I hear that one was even worse. But the yeah. Mence ban, people were like, oh, who does smoke? And do you think that we should have listened to those people? And I know it's an old gens versus new gens thing, but 
with the amount of tournaments that are played year round, I think the name old gen or past gen rather is kind of a misnomer because the level of metagame development they have just by the sheer volume of games they have. Like, uh, take it used to be different when there weren't as many tournaments. Uh, and metagame development in a lot of the past gens, old gens, it used to be you know, at a snail's pace because there were only a couple guys who were still building in the tier. Now it gets played year round. It gets teams be people actually believe teams get outdated in like a month or something, which I think is silly. But yeah. the the point is the metagame moves so much that the idea that it has to be frozen and accessible for people to come back to without any changes. I mean, if these people play once a year and then come back a year later and think that they're just going to coast by all their past knowledge then they're also very wrong and this is the case for metagames like a, a lot of old dpp players came back after years not playing it and they thought it was going to be the same thing and it wasn't and no tiering changes had occurred and so if you are going to come back and want to get into it seriously you're going to have to relearn things and whether or not that whether that is the result of a tiering change or not is irrelevant because it's going to change either way so why wouldn't we keep trying to make it better now i'm not saying that the there should be monthly suspect tests or anything like that that would be ridiculous but uh, i'm saying that it, the we're here because we love the game and yeah. so the people in charge of the tier they have a vested interest in making the tier as good as it can be uh yeah. so that's why we and I don't think the people who don't play the tier or care about the tier who yell in YouTube comments, Flying Gem Acrobatics is so broken, then I don't think we should care that they think it's stupid. Or I don't think we should care that, oh, well, uh, I like it when there's three weathers in OU instead of two, so we better not get rid of Sun's viability. I... Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I know I went on a tangent there, but it is relevant to the point. Yeah. No, it's fine. I'll just jump in quickly. I think the point on returning players, I get your point in that things are always changing and nobody should come back after three, six, nine months or a year and expect to be able to use the exact same thing they were previously. But, but and I, I think was I really, I mean, obviously I don't feel that way because I just pushed through a gems ban and mm -hmm. a baton pass ban, you know, six months ago. Oh yeah, and that sleep, too. And, 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 sleep, and, sleep, and sleep was banned two years ago and got the tail was banned and, and duck tree was banned. I'm, I'm in favor of all of those. Mm -hmm. Those are really tinking around the edges and removing things that are, that, that do take the game from, Oh, this is actually just a really high power level to, Oh, this actually makes us fucking unplayable. Like getting rid of those stuff is absolutely fine. I think a ban of Latios or Drizzle or Ferrothon, Mm -hmm. changes the metagame so much overnight it's unrecognizable mm -hmm. so should, should we talk about latios quickly because i know a lot of people are like yeah i think latios is the one thing that the one unifying thing and that even people who think gen 5 is generally fine then they say oh well latios is oh let me clarify my keldeo stance by the way because yeah. i agree that and this goes back to the player base thing by the way and i realize i'm ripping on the player base a lot but after seeing some of the stuff that has been said and the years of every, then I'm venting a little. Point being, so you uh, have said you don't think Keldeo is broken because of the way the player base uses it. But if people used decent sets, then it would be bonkers. And uh, yeah, and I, and, I, and that, and that I, reminds I, me of I, when I, yeah. I think I think there's a hang up on mm -hmm. using sort of the classic Keldeo sets like mm -hmm. Specs and Scarf. Mm -hmm. Um, I think Specs is actually not very good. No, Specs is <laughs> Specs makes you like, Specs makes you have worse matchups in games you should be dominating. If people exactly, use just like, like it's, HP it's, Grass, it's, it's then such a needless amount of power. Like Specs doesn't oh, really uh, things that other sets wouldn't. It's already. such overkill. Um, good lord. Um, yeah. So. So, so, so yeah. I think I think Specs Keldeo. People often say oh, we should ban Keldeo because Specs to a KO Celebi and shit like that. And so no. I'm like, well, okay, but. <laughs> right. It's it's all it's also really bad and loads of other stuff. I think there are Keldeo sets that are slept on. I think things that's like straight four attacks, calm mind mm. three attacks, Hayapa, sub calm mind. Um, I think there's a bunch of stuff Keldeo can do that is being missed. And I think often the scarier sets are the ones that people aren't using. I'm still not in favor of a Keldeo ban. I want to say that. Uh, I, I don't think. I think I, I, uh, I don't even rank as a top ten Pokemon in black and white. Well, here's I I, I here's why I would ban it. I think because of the strain, because we mentioned how, uh, let, let's say you're weak to Tornadus, but you can still play around Tornadus a lot more easily because it's got that stealth rag weakness, it's very frail. And Keldeo, on the other hand, 
it will really make you rue the day if you don't bring a dedicated check to it. You can play around Tornadus without a dedicated check, and it's also really easy to fit dedicated checks to Torn. Whereas with Keldeo, the pool is so limited, and that limiting effect, it, people say, oh, well, your teams are so predictable, they always have the same you know, sets of Pokemon. It's like, yeah, because there aren't very many Pokemon that counter things like Keldeo. You need a water resist that also resists fighting. So how many of those? We have, we have the Lottie twins, so Latios, because you're not going to use Latios without Latios. We have uh, Lottie twins, slow twins uh then jellicent you know those are fine and then you have the grasses celebi and amoongus who are widely considered to be terrible and for good reason so so the point is that it forces one of those pokemon on every team that doesn't want to be absolutely shattered by it uh yeah right from the beginning and i don't think that's healthy because i there are plenty of ways like let's take a physical attacker like there are plenty of ways that you can check uh, something like terrakion and garchomp without having to be pigeonholed into you must have an x resist that also resists y and mm -hmm. with keldeo it is that simple and then you would say oh well latios is on every team and i would say well not only is that very abusable but latios is broken too and that's where i get the natural response of latios and kelds so yeah yeah but well, just to clear up that I, I don't think those are all the options you have keldeo can to play you also have gastrodon and seismoto mm. but but those just die to hp grass it's not even yeah, yeah specs hp grass like if, well they this, can't even switch into this, this regular like if, if okay so let's say keldeo switch grass. or gastrodon switches into secret sword and then it dies to hp grass the end it, it's that simple okay kevin are, are you saying that your sans team with abr then is weak to keldeo yes it, it is absolutely destroyed by Keldeo. No, like, it, that's the best match it can possibly have. <laughs> it's, that, that team into Keldeo Reign is, like, actually dominant, no? It I should, it, if, it, if it's Specs Keldeo Reign, then no, it's fine. If it's yeah. a non-choice HP like Grass Keldeo, if it's a non-choice HP Grass Keldeo, then, yeah. I mean, you have to not lose to Latios. <laughs> Wait, no, 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 sir, there's no Latios in the Gastron version. So, yeah, you just yeah, have yeah. to not auto-lose to uh, Alakazam and Reuniclus. And and, 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 and that that's my stance. So I think that the Keldeo sets that break those kind of teams mm -hmm. um, are, like, really good. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, Banworthy, I still don't know. But, yeah, um, I, I think, yes, I get your point. In that, like, hard Keldeo counterplay is really narrow. I wouldn't go as far to say you have to have a water and fight resist together on every single team. But well, it's that or Gastrodon, and actually not even just a water fight resist because you can't use D Knight for it and you can't use Gyarados for it. So it's those specific ones. And I think D Knight's okay. But um, it, but then it uses Icy Wind and you just die. It's the yeah. It's, but, it's, like, it's again, the, again, like well, like what sets here, Kevin? Like, like what, what's the set you're thinking? Hydro, of? Secret Sword, yeah, Icy Wind, 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 HP Grass with Lefties okay. or Expert Belt or Payapa Berry. It, okay, as soon as, as soon as that becomes the dominant Keldeo set, we'll do another video. But but, but why does that? Why do we have to wait for that? <laughs> well, we've known that Keldeo is broken for years and years. Yeah. Yeah, I think I, I was honestly pro ban on it. I was pro ban probably in 2013. Mm. Um, I've I've honestly just gone off it now. I don't think it's actually because the the thing with Keldeo is that unless it's Payapa, mm. it's very often a trading one for one Pokemon, and it invites things in that are scarier than Keldeo. And this mm. is just very classic black and white in that if your Pokemon gets revenge killed by Alakazam, your team is bad against Alakazam, <laughs> you're going to have issues against Psychics. And as someone who I mean, you can't know this. If you go through like my tournament scout, I pretty much exclusively use Alakazam teams. I think it's like absolutely ridiculous. It, I, it I, is, yes. I, I, I so infrequently have issues with Keldeo just off the back of having two Pokemon faster than it in a meta game where there are like, you know, you know, you know what I mean. Like it's, it's, it's But one of those Pokemon is Latios, who is broken itself. Is is exactly, the point? Yeah, but, yeah. But, but 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 there's 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 no shortage of Pokemon that like make Keldeo. A liability. It's um, Latios and Alakazam, and what else? Uh, well, all the it, all the it, defensive ones that you said, in addition to. But they don't yes, really make it a liability. Yes, they do. Okay, but the thing is that if you have Keldeo. And then everything on your team. So if you have Sand Keldeo, then you pursue yeah. those things. Good night. 
If you have Rain Keldeo, then all those Pokemon you use to check Keld make you weaker to Thunderous. All the Pokemon you used to... Yeah, the Slow Twins and uh, Jellicent. Okay, but Celebi, Gastrodon, and Lattes. Well, Gastrodon, first of all, dies to Grass Knot. Uh, Lattes, Lattes, and Latios is broken. And, and it all comes back to Latios being broken, is the thing. Mm. Latios is broken, but it keeps these two broken things in check. But we can't touch Latios, so then these other broken things are fine. Uh, and yeah. Okay, but but I think you you could point to a lot of other past gens where that's probably the case also. Where if you remove like the best Pokemon in the game, mm -hmm. then like three other things. Like, but is the like, best Pokemon? But is the best Pokemon in the game in those other gens also broken itself? Snorlax, I don't know. No, 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 no I don't, Snorlax is <laughs> Snorlax has been reduced to a sleep talking wall. It's I honestly think Zapdos is better than Snorlax in GSC. <laughs> okay, but, okay, but but stuff like that then, stuff that is both offensively and defensively and like speed tier wise, the benchmark of the tier. Mm -hmm. But exists beyond black and white Latios. That's but not black and white Latios is much more unforgiving because it forces you into it forces you into specific Pokemon in a meta game that has a lot of threats. That's the whole point. And cuz in GSC then you need uh, so and so Pokemon to counter other Pokemon, but it's a small meta game so you're probably going to use that in general. Whereas in Black and White then you have Latios destroying everything. You need the Titar or the Scizor in good conditions to handle Latios and being forced into using those or getting relentlessly massacred and that absolutely is the case. Being forced into using those or getting relentlessly massacred is not healthy in a meta game where there are so many uh, options in general. Because if as soon as you get rid of Latios then the step down once you get rid of Keldeo and Thunderous 2, it's so much more reasonable to answer. So I don't know, there's no definitive answer because obviously you can't uh, say for certain how a meta game will be after a ban. There's never any proof of that. But no. uh, but I think it, it's Latios is so clearly an issue that it You see what I mean? Yeah, no, I, I know what you mean. Let, let's go. Let's go to that. We've kind of we've covered Keldeo there pretty comprehensively, I think. Yeah, and Latios, so I, think, I guess. <laughs> just, just to cover that again, I think Keldeo. You have a lot of options to make Keldeo like at least the common Keldeo sets. Oh, I forgot to mention Starmie, I guess. Maybe, but Starmie's not really yeah, a good Keldeo I mean, answer either. Starmie's pretty iffy, but uh, it, there's a lot of ways you can just completely invalidate Keldeo in the team builder, both offensively and defensively. And I think the fact it's quite often are very bad against the Psychics, where the Psychics are three of the best offensive Pokemon. You actually just win faster than the Keldeo team does. So, mm -hmm. and like it's Black Black White's a meta game where if we start looking to things that you know trade one KO and then are forced out, as broken, mm -hmm. then that's not unique to Keldeo. That's you know there's there's Kieran Black, and again I I would happily read Kieran Black. Me but, too. But, that was another horrible mistake yeah. foisted on us by an incompetent <laughs> like, council. But, but but you know what I mean like that. Keldeo is not unique in that regard. There are loads of things that and do that. and I would be happy to yeah. visit those things as well. Yeah, but 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 the thing that makes them balanced, not balanced per se, because they're not like the the thing that's you're not getting like swept by these things because you very often you just lose to counter sweepers because their typing is shit because Alakazam and Latios are so good. It all it's comes back to Latios and Alakazam being thing. more broken than anything else. Of that. It, it all comes back to Alakazam and Latios being more broken than everything else. Because when you think of the big offensive threats in black and white, then you don't think, oh, I'll counter it. You think, oh, well, I'll put a faster Pokemon on my team to answer it. And the Scarfers are generally terrible. So, and they aren't, they're not offensively threatening. So you want Pokemon that are naturally fast, and uh, they're going to use their natural offensive threat to take the momentum back and force more on the opponent. So let's start with Kieran Black, which isn't even that fast by Black and White standards, which is hilarious. Oh my so you have, you, Black. Yeah, you, have, you have Kieran Black, then you have Hydreigon, then you have the stuff that actually starts getting used. So you have uh, Volcarona, then you have Thunderous Therian outrunning Volcarona. Not that that's a common scenario, but you get the, this is how the speed tiers work. So then you have Thunder... What, what do you use to outrun Thunderous Therian? The nearest thing, 
Garchomp. Yeah. Well, how will you outrun Garchomp? Terrakion and Keldeo. How will you outrun Terrakion and Keldeo? Latios. How will you outrun Latios? Well, if you have a Tornadus or a Starmie, then yeah, but those are specific on rain. And otherwise, or HO if it's Starmie. And beyond that, how do you outspeed those with uh, and with sand usually? Oh, Alakazam. And then it all comes back to Alakazam being the best uh, offensive threat, or the fastest offensive threat. Uh, is Al so Alakazam is a huge uh, restricting factor. Yeah, yeah. I, th I think I think Alakazam. A lot of people point to Alakazam being broken. Like I use it so much. Like I, I probably do lean that way. Maybe. <laughs> Um, I, I don't think I've got to ban, ban it right now. Right? I think Reuniclus is nearly as bad, by the way, it's, just it's, for what it's worth. What's that? I think Reuniclus is near, uh, nearly as bad. I think both of them, they they catch so many things in the team builder. Mm -hmm. I think it's their main role, right? Like, like if you've got Alakazam, you're immediately not weak to so much stuff. Mm -hmm. um, same with Reuniclus. If you've got Reuniclus, then you're not going to be losing to like weird chip pivoty things and mm -hmm. Hollytoad and Tentacruel just by purely Reuniclus existing. Mm -hmm. That's kind of upside. Um, so yeah, I, I do think Alakazam sort of patches a lot of things together, which is why I'm kind of anti looking at Alakazam. Um, do you want to talk about Latios? I think we've mostly covered a bit of it there. Yeah, I think. Sort of is. I think it's Latios. it's not just Latios in and of itself. Well, yeah. it is Latios in and of itself, and it's also Latios uh, in regard to how it enables its teammates. Because yeah. when there's only Tyranitar to truly handle Latios, you can talk about how Jirachi exists and whatnot, and then you. First of all, it gets tricked. Good night. Second of all, Rain Surf with spikes down. Good night. Third of all, Jirachi's terrible. Fourth of fourth of all, it really is just Titar standing between Latios and massacring everything that's actually good in the tier. So, I don't think that's healthy. And I when it's like, oh, well, why do you always use Titar? Because Latios? Because Rain? And to a lesser extent, Alexander Reuniclus. So, even T as great as Titar is, you can't handle Latios and still expect to win the Weather War reliably. You need help from, like, Excadrill uh, spinning and a bunch of other stuff shoring you up. You can't handle Latios and Alakazam and Reuniclus on the same team. It's just too much. Like, there's nothing else that handles Latios, so you have to switch to Titar, and that's exactly what the Latios user wants. So, what else are you going to do? This isn't just a get good kind of thing. It's literally, there is nothing more that can be done if you can only use T-Tar against Latios. And then the Latios user builds their team as they should to take advantage of it. Then you're just losing either way. And the safest way to you know be shored up against it is to use your own sand team with Latios and Alakazam and Reuniclus and friends and to engage in those psychic wars. So... Yeah. yeah, or you take advantage of all the defensive redundancy on those teams because they, if if they're going mm. triple psychic, they don't. And then, and then, them. yeah, and then when you run a team uh, with Volcarona and Cloister and friends, and then you get cleaned up by Rain. Okay, not not only that though, but uh, Mammoth Swine Rain is the same sort of thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sub, -sub Thunder is the same mm. thing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So yeah, uh, on Latios, I think uh, Latios is obviously the Pokemon in the tier that has the target on its back it's mm. sort of public enemy number one i don't think that is inherently a bad thing for metagame i think having one thing that is far and away the thing you have to consider in the team builder that being latius i don't think that is that bad i personally don't like metagames that are really sandboxy where you can use you know 200 viable things no i i agree like, with that on principle i've not used Cordon in four years i'll use Cordon now yeah i don't enjoy stuff like that i quite enjoy things where the problem solving is like really really narrow I agree with that on principle. The problem is where uh, it's not just you have to use Titar to not use Deladio, lose Deladios. It's you have to use Titar to not lose Deladios and the things Latios is paired with. Yes. And that's just yeah, too much. I, I do think there are smart workarounds to that. I think the hyper offense sort of movement has been a good response to that. And I think the dynamic between them is actually quite healthy right now. I think things like Mammoth Swine too. Mammoth Swine's really, really cool. I think there's been an uptake of Hail as well, because Obama Snow offensively is really, really good into those sort of teams. Um, I think we're still working through it. I, I don't think we're at the point now where... You know, like, we went through a period of time where those teams were almost unviable, because, mm. like, Cloyster for Corona was so good against them. Mm. And if you, if you had any past history of using Alakazam, like I did, people would just use Cloyster against you, or Volcarona. 
So we've, we've very quickly gone from a period of time where those teams were an absolute liability, now them going back to being de facto best teams in the game. And I think people are still working out ways to sort of bring them back down a peg or two. Um, with novel yeah, hails and uh, different Magnazone setups to punish Skarmory and other stuff like that. I think it's soon after the gem ban to, to take any sort of action on, on Psychics. Um, but again, back on Latios in particular, I think Latios falls in that category of things that we can't realistically touch because mm -hmm. of how much the tier is benchmarked around them. We've gone through the whole speed tier issue before. Mm -hmm. I really, really want you to think, Kevin, about what a metagame without Latios or Keldia would look like and whether you think the community is ready for like the two-year follow-up to banning both of those, mm -hmm. considering how much the two of them are relied upon already to beat everything in that sort of 95 to 105 speed range we've just mentioned like i legitimately think there is a chance that garchomp is stupid as fuck in a meta game without latios and keldia mm. um thunderous th th thunderous t without without um without latios is like a pretty insta ban so really you're banning three things well like thunderous t it needs to be banned even with latios around but your, your point is taken um <laughs> Uh, no, I, 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 I think that's what people who are clamoring for a ban don't fully un, don't fully think through as well. Is mm -hmm. that are you ready to actually go through trying to fix whatever hellscape results from that? Mm -hmm. um, well, that's that that's exactly why I think it should just be left up to the people in charge. It's like why should the people who generally don't care why should it uh, hinge on whether they can do it or not? Why shouldn't it just be like, all right, well, I'm in charge of the tier now, and I'm going to get rid of, or we're, whoever, we're going to, because I know there are other council members who have said specifically, I want to ban Latios, I want to ban Keldia, I want to ban Thuntherian, and why shouldn't it be, all right, the council agrees on this, and this is, that's it, the end, and it's up to them to keep working through the aftermath of whatever the tier winds up being, however long it is. Because they're the ones who are going to be actively playing it anyway, so why not leave it in their hands as opposed to a community who doesn't know what it wants, doesn't know what's good for the metagame? Yeah. I will say at the minute, I don't think anyone in council has that stance really, do they? Mm. Maybe I, I don't know now. I don't know now. I know it has been the case before. Um, I, I think at the minute there's, there's no one really that's entertaining the idea of Latios Keldia. So, so, so even, if, even if we did want to do yeah. it. I, I don't think. Oh, sorry, no, no, what I'm trying to say is there's no one who actually wants to be the dictator, mm -hmm. first and foremost. Um, I'd do it. No, you wouldn't. I would. Oh, I would unban Kirim White in a heartbeat. <laughs> <laughs> so I, th I, th I think first and foremost is that. Sec secondly, um, there, there's no actual setup to do with the way that uh, tearing policy works on Smogon right now. Mm -hmm. As we've already established, you have to get community support. Will we get community support to ban Latios and Keldeo amongst the guys who are currently farming wins in this tier? I think it's incredibly unlikely. Mm. Um, well, what I'm saying is that the tiering policy on Smogan is bad, and yeah, we should yeah, dispense uh, with it. Rapid ASAP. Yeah, and, and, and that's a fair stance. I think you know full well that I was pretty disillusioned with the whole way the gems things went, because it felt like we could have just done that mm -hmm. on day one, um, and it took weeks to get anything pushed through. Just because of policy. Un uh, unbelievable. So, 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 unbelievable. So, yes. So, so, yeah, so, so you, you know how I feel about it. In terms of how many rounds of things you have to go through to take any action. Mm -hmm. How much evidence you need to ban something that. I mean, from my time on council, I just remember when we wanted to ban Arena Trap and people who didn't play was, were like, well, let's see if Diglett is really broken. And then we had yeah. months and yeah. months of Diglett yeah. actually being. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but this discussion happens every time for Arena Trap. That happened in Sword and Shield as well. Like th there was a thread about Arena Trap. And well, like, and I think it should apply to yeah. other generations as well. That the people who traffic. don't know what they're talking about should just. I mean, I, I remember the beginning of Sword and Shield where the people who actually played were like, "Let's automatically ban Shadow Tag," and yeah. then a bunch of policy people who won't touch the generation after it's a month old. They're like, "Well, I'm not sure about this. I personally don't think." <sighs> Yeah, it, it it feels just very strange how because when I came to Smogan, uh, over a decade ago, then I came because I thought it was the pinnacle of competition. Just because if you couldn't, if you disagree with them, they didn't care. 
It was like, oh, well, you don't like that we, you know, freed Latias into... Because I remember uh, during current gen, there were a lot of, like, casual players who were like, I can't believe Smogan unbanned Latias. This is the dumbest thing ever. It's so broken. Go back to Ubers. And then the men's thing, obviously. And Smogan, you know, whoever they were being uh, run by at the time, like Jumpman and Jobin, those guys, they were like, okay, well, you're not as good as us, so we don't care what you think. And now it's kind of going in the other direction where it's like, well, we have to take into consideration what the people who don't know what they're talking about are saying. No, but, but Kevin, these people, I'm not talking about like the community at large. I'm mm. talking about when you try to put a vote together, you have to... But to get the vote together, then you have to get public opinion is what I'm saying. Okay, yes, okay, that's a different point. I, I think the public opinion thing is bullshit. I think I, I, I shouldn't have to try and justify banning gems to people who only play advanced, for example. Like, yes, ex not... ex exactly. That's... Yeah. Okay, but, but what I mean is that even among the vote, mm -hmm. the vote which is done by the people who have the best tournament results in the calendar year up until that point, they get to decide mm -hmm. what gets banned. Mm -hmm. Those people, are they going to vote for a Latios and Keldia ban in a tier that they've just farmed wins for all year? Well, a lot of those player bases, when you look at the votes, and you know how when you look at the votes for these past gens, and this is the case in like every past gen vote, then you have uh, someone who ha doesn't really play the tier but has gotten far in a recent tournament and you know how fluky those things can be you know people get good bracket luck and i'm not saying this is always the case or whatever but sometimes you have someone who just gets good bracket luck gets handed the right teams because they're friends with the right people doesn't really play the tier i remember a bunch of dpp votes like uh on the when we were trying to ban baton pass a couple of years ago then uh, half the voters were people who didn't know anything about the tier, but had just gotten far in DPB Cup by spamming Baton Pass. And yeah. that's... So I don't know that you can really rely on that kind of thing either, and that's why I'm you know, kind of anti the whole system. I, I think that's a pretty cynical take on it. I think you have to trust that the guys who have done the best in tournaments in the year are the guys who are most qualified to. In, in most cases, I think there are a couple of people on the vote list that we had. I'm like, where, how did you get top mm -hmm. 16 of what you know mm -hmm. um but, but for the most part like it's all the guys that we would expect to mm -hmm. vote you know to the extent that i didn't get to vote kevin mm -hmm. like like our, our bar was and so isn't high, that like, just I, horrible I I, 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 I I didn't get a, a vote on gems mm -hmm. um which which shows which shows this isn't working because I, I had a bad tournament year this year so mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, you of all I people think. should say this is ridiculous. You were the one who got it in the first place because you understand better than anyone else. Because tournament results are not all in this game we play. Tournament results are not always synonymous with this guy understands the metagame. You know how often I've seen uh, there have been guys who have made it into classic playoffs. The, there was a guy who made it to I, this happened actually like two or three times. A GSC Cup finalist didn't know they couldn't swords dance twice with Marowak. A GSC Cup finalist. Yeah. yeah so things like that. So just because the results, you know, it's the uh, results oriented thinking in a game like Pokemon. It's bad when you're doing things like uh, metagame analysis or player analysis. And it's bad when you go to tiering too. Yeah, I'm not saying like everything should be 100% an eye test, but there's got to be some degree of it because this rigid adherence to policy is, well, what's gotten us with this mess of taking a year to ban things like that were so obviously broken, like Rush Drill and Arena Trap and... Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. no, no, no I get you. But, but there is also a large part of, even taken out sort of the cynical take of mm. people... Who vote don't, don't aren't actually qualified to. Even mm. t take that sort of argument out just for a second and say, mm. um, if there's like okay, if there's a very very different opinion among the voter pool compared to the commun the community at large, mm -hmm. who do we prefer to listen to? Okay, okay, yeah, Let's say Matthias. Let's say there's a very large majority of people on YouTube and Discord and that who are like pro Latios ban, but the voter pool don't want to ban it. What do we do? Okay, it, your point is taken. That's fair enough. I just don't think that it should come because to the... I'm pretty, because I'm pretty confident that's the result that's mm. going to happen mm. if we were to do that. I understand. I'm just saying it shouldn't come to the voter pool in general. Mm. Yeah, I kind of... Yeah. Yeah, see, that's... 
because as soon as you get we get, get into that whole thing that we're gonna go in circles on but the, the that's why i keep going that's why i keep going back to the dictator thing because i mean look at gems i mean that wasn't just a public opinion thing that was also a voter uh thing where uh, which is absolutely ridiculous yeah, I mean, I mean that was an example of the people that tended to have done best in tournaments this year were the people who were early, uh, who were early adopters on gems being like really overpowered. Mm -hmm. And obviously, when they can vote off the back of being the best gem users of the year, they're not going to vote to ban them because that's the style that they became dominant in the tier using. Um, so there, there is an element of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it is just, it's quite difficult to gauge. It's, I, I think there's, there's still a really good place to have voter pools. I think in situations where gems, for example, when all five council members wanted to ban it, I think if we don't have the power to ban it in that situation, I don't know what the point of council is fully. And I've raised that point before. Mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah. Uh, on Latios and Keldeo, I don't think we'd, we'd ever get the, uh, the support mm -hmm. to sort of pass through. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. Well, Very that brings us to the point of, you know, what's the point of the council? Because it does come back to tiering bureaucracy stuff over and over and over again. Yeah. And how does one fix that other than making a big public stink about it? Yeah. <laughs> Which is uh, ex new, exactly what I love new, doing now. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we start a new community called uh, Black White 2K22. <laughs> <laughs> You have to offer money prizes, though, or no one's going to care. Yeah. Th that's the eternal problem. Yeah. Uh, is there anything else that's busted? I mean, I'm glad we're not still in the uh, phase of a few years ago where some people were like, well, sleep talk is skillful, so... <sighs> uh, we, we, we didn't talk thunderous. And oh, no, yeah, thunderous is... Yeah, let's get through that one, because that one's so yeah, dumb. Uh, yeah, so, so, so my thoughts on Thunderous, if there was anything, if I had to pick something, I would ban Thunderous, but I'm still anti-ban right now. The thing with Thunderous is that it's um, it's it's uncountable with just three move slots, and then it gets a fourth slot to just sort of pick things. Mm -hmm. um, now, now, we've sort of discussed this this week. You think sub is just like a waste of time. It is. Um, I, I, I think sub is what makes Thunderous do something every single game. Um, whereas, like, if you... Agility, or if you have grass knot, there's a very real risk that just out of pivoting, you can end up with thunderous doing nothing. Mm -hmm. Sub guarantees that and makes progress. Well, my uh, favorite way to use thunderous is based on the principle that everything slower than thunderous gets destroyed by it. And they have to, so you want to take away the faster pivot, right? And as soon as you agility, then that you can't be outsped anymore. And if the slower things that were keeping you in check can't handle Thunderous, then the faster things that are now also slower really can't handle it. So I think the agility lets Thunderous win games that it otherwise would only be very good in. Yeah, I think, yeah. I think, yes, agility is like a ceiling and floor set. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. It has the highest upside, also probably... The lowest downside, if that makes sense. Um, I think I think sub sub. sub I th there's a reason sub is the most common set. I think mm. um, it's for people who don't want funds to be a win condition necessarily, but want it as like an out and out breaker. Um, also, nasty plot sets exist, and they are really fucking stupid. Either sub nasty plot or just nasty plot three attacks into some archetypes. That's stupid. It's like Celebi stuff. Like that is actually the dumbest thing. No, I agree. Um, They're <laughs> yeah. Something that, um, that there are a couple sets that I have to say, Finchinator is the guy who's been pushing the Thunderous envelope the most. Um, he uses Thunderous, I think, more and more masterfully than anyone else. Uh, he's got a lot of sets that he likes. He's used Toxic, he's used Protect. I love Toxic um, Protect. Oh, no, he used them separately. No, you're right. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Toxic 3 Attack and Protect 3 Attack. The idea of Protect being you just sort of burn out Latios, Draco Meteors, but without losing your health through sub. Mm -hmm. Um,. And uh, something he used against me in SPL was T-Wave 3 attacks, uh. which is a really, really good lore for Latios. Um, so he used that with Subcombine Keldeo, and yeah, after, on, on that day I thought this Pokemon's broken. <laughs> um. <laughs> yeah, I wonder why, because what else were you yeah. going to do? Run another Thunderous <laughs> counter? 
Yeah, exactly. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I could honestly get behind Thunder. And, and the best part is it doesn't even need a T-Wave because in rain, Thunder has that nice, uh, nifty 30% bur uh, burn chance, paralysis chance, so you might just be screwed just by switching into its most common attack. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, that, that's a big thing. And and you, I think something that's also quite big, especially for, for past gens, is spoken about Drizzt and Latios and Keldeo. I think part of the reason you can't touch them is because they... They keep enough other things in check that the meta game will be fucked if they're removed. I don't think Thunderous necessarily does that. Mm -hmm. um, outside of Excadrill, mm -hmm. there's not really much that Thunderous is like defensively checking that you wouldn't already have checks to on Rain. I mean, it sets one, it sets one Ferrothorn, but like other stuff does that too for Rain. Um, it has a know, Volt like, Switch like, immunity, but that's pretty much it. Yeah, like, like, like Keldeo is tough to remove for like a bunch of defensive reasons and speed tier reasons. Like, I, I don't want to know what Garchomp looks like in a, in a Keldeo and Latilus metagame. Mm -hmm. Thunder is gone, I don't think you have that same sort of issue. It really is just a breaker that is very, very tough to handle defensively, but um, isn't actually doing a lot. It, it kind of has Kieran Black Syndrome, but it's must, much more uh, well-suited to the metagame. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so that's kind of my opinion of Thunderous. So I think it's um, there is a bit of movement behind it. I think it still seems to be a minority opinion, but it is up creeping. Up. Well, I can't um, wait to exploit this with another video. Is Thunderous yeah. broken? <laughs> it's, yeah, I mean, you could be financially milking this one of the five years. I really. That's the that's <laughs> the best thing about Gen Five. Like the worse the tier is, the more money I make. Yeah. yeah so yeah. actually, please make um, don't do anything I suggested. Do not make this tier good. I'm depending yeah, on it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, 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 so Thunder is something that I think um, the it's something that like I think the casual player isn't really talking about. But among the guys that are trying to build in this, Thunder is like so limiting. Thunder it's so uh, like, really really. Well, hard. the thing you oh. mentioned that I like about it is you said three attacks and it's already broken, and then that fourth attack just makes it more broken. So I, I mean, I like stuff like U-turn too. Well, I also like Grass Knot just because yeah. Gastrodon uh, Sand is so common. And you go from being nearly useless against... Well, I guess with a bunch of spikes and Focus Blast, but you, you know how bad Focus Blast is. And you just yeah. make that into a can't-lose matchup, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, and Seismitoad, uh, and Seismitoad usually comes with Excadrill, so you can't guarantee spikes as much. And it runs Protect a lot, so you don't want to be flailing around with that. GK, turn around. And you have a 100% accurate move to use on T-Tar, and let me tell you, Focus Blasting T-Tar twice, not something you want to do, so... I do like Grass Knot a lot. I like U-Turn a lot, too. That one's real... Because U-Turn hits both uh, Latios and T-Tar. And Rain is so crazy broken for... Uh, or crazy bad against Latios that anything you can do is just... Yeah. Yeah, and, and Celebi, too. I think a, a kind of... A, a team that goes in and out of fashion every now and then is U-Turn Thunderous with Scarf Sizzle. Mm -hmm. Um... And some kind of Keldeo set. You see, you see yeah, it'll make at least one or two uh, appearances in tournaments throughout the year. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's really potent. Um, but yeah, Thunderous is the thing that is like, it's always going to do something. It's always quite good. Mm -hmm. um, and you can't really invalidate it in the team builder. Um, and even if you do, like, you always run the risk of like Thunder Paralysis. So it's probably like the, the, the closest thing to getting acted on. Um, but right now, I still don't think it's it's particularly likely to, to see any action mm. um, unless something big changes would you say uh, that you that? could use thunderous over and over much in the way you could latios and not really be punished for it what's that sorry uh do you think that thunderous is one of those pokemon that you can't really punish the use of even if you know it's coming uh yes yeah i mean I mean, we were talking the other day about how you prepare for tournament games. Mm. Things like Latios and Thunderous, I don't look at in someone's scout and be like, okay, we'll try and fish for this. Because, like, how do you fish for, uh, for Thunderous? Like, exactly. Um, you, just, you, just, you just don't. Um, yeah. Uh, I think Thunderous is really, really good. It's probably like the, the, the sleeper broken thing. I think the, the, the community may be coming around on the idea of Thunderous being... I think the community now considers Thunderous to be the best rain threat. Mm -hmm. I would not use a rain team without uh, Thunderous. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we'll just see. Again, I, I think it's still very soon after the gem span to be really having strong thoughts about it. But mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't be hugely opposed if the community shifted that way and wanted to get rid of it. I'll try to do my part to help them realize <laughs> what it, realize the truth. 
Yeah, should we go Reuniclus? Oh, I hate Reuniclus so much. Because nothing that has... It's never really changed in terms of how broken it is. It's yeah. it's just still broken. And, you know, we tried to... Instead of addressing Reuniclus, uh, a couple geniuses... Well, their heart was in the right place. They were like, yeah, well, let's uh, bring back Excadrill because rapid spinning solves all the problems. And then I was like, yeah. Well, yeah, but there's still not a lot of things that actually check Reuniclus. Unless you want to run Mew on every team, and to say nothing of how, well, should you just... You know, it's the whole let's unban a, something just... To, so if that one thing uh, is not on the team, then are you risking a Reuniclus loss? You know, because that sounds really healthy. Yeah. Um, and, and the fact that Extra Drill isn't even that good at spinning... I mean, it's fine, but there's a reason why we don't see Extra Drill on a game-to-game -game basis. You know, it's like, oh, well... <sighs> Yeah, I mean, again, it's, it's kind of become the benchmark thing to beat with the Stealth Rocker. There's a reason why Gliscor and Landorus have become the go-to rockers in the tier. Mm -hmm. um, it's because Drill can't spin on them, yeah. so they have really consistent rocks against Drill. Yeah, and it's um, not like it was ever yeah, very so, good against the Spikers either. Yeah, no, it, yeah, it's 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 not great into into either of them. And um, the Spikes are the whole reason Reunicles is broken. So, yeah. or yeah. one? Of, no, sorry, I take that back. One of the reasons. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so Reunicles, I think is consistently underrated mm -hmm. all the time even when people are saying that Uniclus is having like a good spell i think people still underrate it um yeah i think i think it's really really good uh broken again like thunderous i, I wouldn't be super opposed to removing it but i wouldn't push it forward as like something act on right now um it's just it's it's a team building limiter it's just sort of annoying um it has legitimate wins and losses in the builder depending on sets at times um there are some weird sets that can run like hidden power ice focus blast that you actually can't respond to mm -hmm. um, with some sort of sound variants i um, mean a huge amount of the game is just sort of pivoting around and trying to work out what coverage which coverage it can have um because that sort of determines whether tyranitar or drill or gliscor is going to be your best check to it um and yeah, it's got kind of all the tools it needs to, to remove those sort of things. Um, I think outside of Calm Mind, just the Life Orb sets are really, really strong. Like Life Orb 3 attack. Um, and again, they went through an uptick kind of this time last year. And I still think they are really, really good. Um, yeah. Yeah, Reuniclus, Reuniclus is just good. I think the, the interesting thing about Reuniclus is that it seems to constantly reinvent itself, not only in terms of coverage it uses but the support that it goes with so it seems to reuniclus is weird in that it abuses all kinds of status you know mm -hmm. like reuniclus with burn support is crazy good but it's also really good with t-wave support and also really good with like t-spike support um and so it, it can just constantly go through these phases where it can sort of alter its counterplay over and over and over again just by swipe slight sort of tweaks to the same teams i've got reuniclus teams um one is like yeah like heatran based or like uh rotom wash based with like wisp and stuff and other sort of burns or like trick flame orb stuff and i've got things that are thunder wave based so i've shown you this the hail team i've been using which is like thunder wave clef and thunder wave latios with clefable which again is like just really stupid because paralysis support with common reuniclus is just really really good and then i like also like yeah toxic support it just removes a lot of its regular sort of mid crown counterplay um, so I think, yeah, Reuniclus is really, really good. It fits on... It feels like it only fits on one kind of team, but when you actually delve deeper, the underlying mechanisms behind how those teams work are always very, very different, and the counterplay switches really, really quickly with even just like one Pokemon change, um, which is kind of an interesting dynamic. Um, yeah, I wouldn't be super sorry to see it gone, just because it's just it's it's one of the biggest headaches in the team builder. Um, but whether it's literally broken by definition compared to these other things and again whether we would get a majority of people to remove it is a different question do you think it would be broken if we had an unbanned excadrill yes yeah 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 and how did we unban excadrill via uh what was it again what do you mean a complex ban mm -hmm. yeah. those yeah. those things we aren't allowed to unless someone yeah. uh, unless someone with enough uh, clout as is the parlance of our times then yeah. uh, let's someone with enough clout says it's okay and then it is yeah uh, so just on reuniclus we've got a couple of questions on reuniclus while we were going through it really we on, nice 
Yeah, from Mana asked me, uh, is OTR Runiclus good, like offensive trick? Yes. Um, My I favorite think... place to use Trick Room Runiclus is on Drag Mag, because no matter how good your Drag Mag is, it's weak to Scarf yeah. Latios. And yeah. with Trick Room Runiclus, then you don't care what the opponent... Or, like, Scarf Keldeo Rain uh, is another really nasty one. And with Trick yeah. Room Runiclus, then you blow offensive teams away. I mean, look at Trick Room Runiclus against your standard Rain team. I mean, it's just unfair, almost. Yeah. So... I think there, is, there is also a mid-ground set that people don't use too much, which is Trick Room, two attacks, and recover. That one's really so, nasty, too, yeah. Yeah, yeah which is... um, It, it lets you kind of get, like, the upside of... Calm mindset because with life orb and special attack investment, it's, it's like you're constantly hitting after one calm mind. Mm -hmm. Um, but then you also get that sort of speed reversal as well through uh, the trick room. And, and I mean, you only really launching. need psychic yeah, and focus like, blast, so yeah, exactly. I mean, like hidden power ice is nice and stuff, but mm. it can sort of get by with just those two. Um, yeah, that's a really annoying set as well when you face it, especially when you don't really expect it. Um, that's a really, really good set. Yeah. So yeah, I think uh, <laughs> Reinclus. But that's the thing. I know, like, there's so many dumb things, and we haven't even gotten to Scald, which I think I would be a lot more pleased with Black and White if we just got rid of Scald. Honestly. Yeah. Let's let's go through that then. What yeah. what? Yeah. What's your thoughts on Scald? Uh, I think you mentioned it. The permanent weather thing. First of all, I think Scald is dumb in every generation. Even with the burn nerf, I think it's just a fundamentally horrible move because it's so ridiculously limiting but in gen 5 then you notice how it's already tough enough to handle offensive rain teams and then you mix in scald just messing things up even beyond that and uh just before anyone goes oh wouldn't ferrothorn be broken without scald first of all if you have to rely on Fer scald to beat ferrothorn then your team is bad and I agree with that, yeah. uh second of all if it's broken then we ban it and I'm generally not a fan of the being afraid to ban stuff uh, point of view. But generally, if you were relying on 30% to handle... Uh, I mean, I don't even care how many Scalds you get to fire off. You're still rolling the dice to... Yeah, so... Uh, I think Scald is fundamentally really dumb because there are very few Pokemon that can handle it, especially with either Permanent Sand or Rain backing them up. Uh, and... Yeah, 12% burn at that, in case that wasn't uh, immediately yeah. apparent. So, uh, I, I don't I like Skull. I think it should be... I think uh, Tentacruel with uh, permanent rain is in just as broken as Thunderous or Keldeo or Latios or whatever. I think it, if it's uncontested, it's unbelievable. I mean, how many rain games have you watched where it's just the two things scalding each other? And, yeah, uh, especially, especially Sub. Yeah, uh, sub. Tentacle in, in the rain mirror is like ridiculous. Yeah. Um, yeah, my thoughts on Scald are it, it's a really weird dynamic in every tier because you can never actually rely on it to burn things, but at the same time, you can never switch in things into Scald. Mm -mm. And yeah. Not to get burned. Um, and so for that reason, again, I look at this from the point of view of what would, what would happen if we actually banned this? Because you have to consider that for old gens, because we can't go on like a, a multi-year tiering plan now, I don't think, is my overarching stance. We, we can ban things that we think are going to fix problematic elements, but not things that are going to alter the fabric of the game for years to come. And with old gens, I don't think. Mm -hmm. um, I look at Skulls and I go, if we banned that, all of a sudden, like... Here in black and a lot of the dragons, oh. a lot of the physical things like balloon, choice band balloon, become like just safe switches. Oh, I don't think I that's. Think, I think that's terrifying, personally. Um, I think rain obviously gets a whole lot worse. But even but, but if if, or... if those physical attackers are switching into those Pokemon, then they're going to switch in and scare them out regardless. At some point, it's not like um, I I I don't think Kieran Black is switching into Polyhood and stuff very often at all. Right. Oh. You do that. Okay. Do you no. Have, no. Like, Kieran on I mean. Tentacruel? And if you no. and if and if you could, how much better would Kieran be? I don't think Scald is what's holding Kieran back from viability, a uh, higher viability rather. Like it gets better, but then fundamentally, those Kieran Black teams are still going to be just as flawed because you've got a Kieran Black on your team against a metagame filled with fast dragon and fighting moves. 
So yeah, yes, I, it's it's going to be easier to switch it into rain or whatever. And, and first of all, any nerf to rain is a good one, considering how stupid rain is. Yeah, I, I do think it just triggers a lot of move slot changes. But but the whole thing is that it's it's RNG based. That's the whole thing. Yeah, yeah, it is. But again, like the the game has at least attempted to bounce itself around that in terms of massively increased usage of Reuniclus, Bloom, Celebi, Gastrodon, Seismitoad, all these sort of things. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's been a response to that. Yeah, of course, um, yeah. And think, yeah, and I think yes, there are teams that are unviable because they don't have anything that comes in on Scald. Mm -hmm. I think that's, that's objectively true. And I, it's, we're not it, it, it's... They, fish, they fish into any rain really hard if you've mm -hmm. got nothing to respond to Scald. Mm -hmm. I, if all of those things suddenly went from like being undeviable to being some of like the best things in the game, I think that's like that's a huge metagame shift. Um, I think things like Choice Band Dragon I get way better. Um, Balloon, like I said. I think even on things that were previously running Lum, just mm -hmm. getting to drop that to run, yeah, like other offensive options, I think just becomes really scary. Okay, I guess you're um, thinking switching into them more because I'm thinking more in a one on one, but I guess that's fair. But like those Pokemon are going to come in to on other moves. Like you don't switch Kieran Black into a Politoed Skull, you switch it on a Protect, or you don't switch it on a Slowbro Slack Off or a coverage move or things like that. I get that it's easier, but if these Pokemon are so terrifying that we need a 30% move to keep them from switching in regularly, then isn't that more telling about those Pokemon? It is. But it becomes down to is the decision going to be to ban nothing or mm. to ban five, six, seven things in the space of two But years? would those five, six, seven things really be broken just because you can't mess them up on the Switch sometimes? Uh, I think it's really hard to... It, this is, is going to be the, under, uh, the underpinning point of the whole video, I think, is it, which is what my stance is, is. Is the metagame right now so bad? we are going to lurch into the unknown mm -hmm. with a ban like this that can have like a ridiculous number of knock-on effects and i think things like scald drizzle latios have huge knock-on effects in a way mm -hmm. that something like thunderous doesn't which is why i'm open to thunderous okay I think that, that, that's, that's the takeaway point i think it's very unfortunate that that's the case that the actions think, of the current it's just gen and it's, just, it's just pragmatism pragmatism like it's oh. No, I, I I understand. Like I respect it. I think it's unfortunate that the actions of the uh, Gen Five Council in the current Gen left us with things where we're forced to say, "Well, I guess this isn't the worst the meta game has been in the past however many years." But I, I understand. You know, what else are you going to do with it? Yeah, uh, I, I so. think there's also a, a good amount of like recency bias when it comes to people saying the meta game is like so bad. I mm -hmm. mean, two months ago we had gems. Six months ago, we had Bat and Bass. A couple of years ago, we had Sleep. Mm -hmm. And then a few years before that, we had like Dug Tree and Arena Trap. I was like, oh, really going to go back to like 2016 and say 2016 was so good? I was like, it, it had was. Sleep well, the, the, reason, the reason it was good is because those things weren't used. Because, okay. like, and so, like, this was my stance when I made that uh, video recently, where uh, in 2016, we had all those broken things, but they weren't being used. So, oh. my, my hope when getting rid of those broken things would be, okay. We get rid of those broken things, and then the metagame is fine. And this was actually the case uh, many times before we discovered the root of... Because uh, before it was these fringe things that are messing up the main metagame. Now yeah. it's the main metagame facets that are broken, and that's the difference. Because before, then it would be like, okay, so now we're going to get rid of Rush Exodrill, and then the metagame is fine again. Until yeah. Doug comes around, then we get rid of Doug, then the metagame is fine again. Then uh, sleep is oh my, this actually is kind of a pain. Then we get rid of sleep. Then the meta game is fine again for some time, and then it continues over and over until people remember that things like Reuniclus exist, or that people start pairing Latios with both Magic Garters and things like that. So we finally reach the point where it's not the fringe stuff like Baton Pass or the gems, which is good by the way, which is very good. But we're finally in the stage where we might actually address. Or like Shadow Tag, actually. Uh, I left that one out. Or we're finally at the stage where we might address uh, the root of the tier as opposed to the fringe strategies ruining the balance of the root of the tier. Because in 2016, which was a great metagame, then we didn't really realize how broken so much of that stuff was. Yeah. And and so we had a very healthy metagame. Uh, yeah. And you know, now we realize the what the most broken stuff is. Whereas in 2016, I don't think you could argue uh, 
anything is was broken that was used then rather yeah you you, you could view it that way. I was I was mostly just dreading the return of Reuniclus throughout all of 2016. Honestly, I was just like, w- "Where is this Pokemon gone? It's still broken." Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I think that's one way of looking at it. To play devil's advocate slightly, the mm-hmm. other way of looking at it is that we've got a community that is so used to tearing action that once we've got rid of all the cheese, they just begin to find other things to want removed because it's fun to ban things and because mm. people. Just like being part of it. I hate banning things because it means the metagame needs to be fixed. <laughs> no, no, I, I don't think that's always the case because mm. people are pro ban for like DPP Jirachi and stuff. Yeah, I'm very anti ban that uh, on that. Yeah, but but, but the fact yeah. that there's a vocal part of the community that says that, that there yeah. are people that just want to ban shit because it is fun. That's right? true. That's true. I, I did rage against that in DPP yeah. for years. Exactly. So okay, I, I get where you're coming from. You go, at some point, you have to go. Stop being greedy. Stop yeah. just like constantly following this train. Uh, yeah, At I'll some re- point, uh, things are actually good. And uh, I'm not saying we're there yet. I'm saying maybe in the future. I will remind okay. viewers that uh, a couple of years ago, people wanted to ban Breloom in DPP. I'm not joking. It, there was a seriously decent outcry of uh, Breloom hatred in the tier. And before yeah, that, it was uh, a bunch of other dumb stuff. Uh, yeah, so it's, it's, it's important to bear in mind just because people talk about banning things does not de facto mean anything needs to be changed because there are there is always a subset of the community that is pro ban on something. Mm-hmm. The computer, the the, the community is never one hundred percent happy on anything. Yeah, the, black and white is just very unique in this regard because of like all those factors you mentioned earlier, like the Latios without fairies, Fairy Throne without defog, stuff like that. Uh, yeah. It's very unique in the at number one in the obscene power level the uniquely obscene power level which is not just strong stuff but factors that make the strong stuff even stronger uh, as opposed to even just Oris, which is much uh, more balanced in this regard and uh, a combination of that and seriously inept current gen tiering and then there was and the fact that black and white was so maligned when it was the current gen, I mentioned this before, but I have to mention it again. The reason why it took so long or to realize all this stuff that was busted was because people were so excited to get away from it as soon as XY came out. So, and that's how badly the current gen council messed it up. That people were like, oh, thank God, that's not the current gen anymore. I don't have to play it anymore. And that's how yeah. most people, including the people who had made the tier during the current gen, like just a lot of the best players are like, all right, don't have to touch that anymore. It's, uh, yeah, so. Yeah, yeah, and that was a flaw point of view. And mm. if you were to ask me, like, do I think Drizzle could have been banned literally a decade ago, I'd say yes. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah. but, but it, it's, it's very different to saying that and then saying okay do we have grounds to do it 10 years later with like a far smaller player base than we had 10 years ago mm-hmm. expect that we're actually going to rapidly get somewhere that's decent mm-hmm. um, i think i think i think that's where we differ I, i'm not arguing i'm not debating with you like how good these things are with the session of keldeo keldeo i literally just really don't think it's broken <laughs> Things like Latios, Thunderous, Runiclus, Alakazam, Drizzle, Scold. I we a hundred percent see eye to eye on the potency of these things. Mm. I'm just looking at it in terms of actually where do we go from there? Yeah. Um, and diving into the unknown, and also the tiering policy side of it. Like, can we actually make it happen? The answer is no. Uh, here's one broken thing uh, yeah. that we haven't touched on. Actually, what do you think of spikes? Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> they're broken, right? Because they really, really are. Uh, in, I remember in 2011, in current Gen Gen 5 UU, when Deoxys D was in the tier, yeah, that's right, that was a thing that happened, uh, then uh, when that happened in the UU player base, genuinely a bunch of people were saying, guys, I think Spikes is kind of the problem. Uh, remember, you know how Broken Spikes makes all these Pokemon? And yeah. it's really hard to do disagree and then there was the whole thing where spikes were so broken that excadrill was unbanned with a complex ban just to try and slow them down and then that didn't work of course so the only way to handle them was to not get rid of them or prevent them or anything but just to use pokemon that are immune to them and so at what point do you say maybe spikes are kind of because rain does really stupid things with spikes too yeah so we're, we're we're beginning to see this in like 
every old gen now, mm-hmm. right? And the, the, the optimal way to play the game is just to kind of ignore spikes. Yeah. Um, I mean, that, that's been a thing for a while in ADV, right? That's of course, yeah. Thing. That but was ever since like, it was current gen, actually, yeah. Just because yeah, they, they basically said, look, the spinners, they can be good, but a lot of time they're bad. And yeah. a lot it's just easier to not have to hinge the game on whether or not you can get the spin off when you can yeah. play the game regardless of hazards. So Yeah, I feel like, like that sort of movement was all an ADV thing. And obviously it picked up in black and white. Um, I, I mean, I guess you and ABR were the first people to go really all in on that. I think that there was always... I think Heist, in- Heist was doing some stupid stuff with that, too. Um, yeah, I, th- I think there was always spike immune strategies, but going the whole way of having literally six sand immune and four mm. spike immune, or even now five spike immune with the last mm. version of that team. Yeah. Like that, that was quite novel, I think. Yeah, um, I suppose and so. Now, and now, it's, it's, and now it's, it's, it's a thing in DPP too, right? Now I've seen like yeah. Starmies completely fallen off the, the face of the earth in DPP. Well, people are stupid for not using Starmy, but that's another subject. Really? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, not, I, I mean, I bul- really bulky yeah. spin Starmy, I agree. Uh, yeah. But that's something else. Uh, but yeah, it's basically, look, spikes are really good, and it's the Pokemon that are immune to spikes are really good, and the Pokemon that check the Pokemon that are immune to spikes are generally vulnerable to spikes, Outside of those same Pokemon themselves, I'm referring to Latios and Clefable, or Latios, Latios and Clefable for the most part. Um, yeah. Yeah. So. Just DPP's version of Latios and Runiclus. Yeah, and and oh, for anyone who fair. for anyone listening, that would have that was already beginning to be the case before the Latios ban, but yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and it was trying to encourage Zach ninety one uh, made the first uh, DPP Superman team, if I recall, actually. Yeah. But yeah, with his famous British Gliscors. So, uh, spin blocking Gliscor. So, uh, it, it it has been the. like, And in, in Oris, you see a lot of that too. You see some of it in Gen 7. Uh, but in Oris, like, there were are a lot of really good teams, which was like, like Clef and Gliscor and Alakazam, usually Mega. And, uh, you know, you even see some Reuniclus there. And it's just, you know, hazards are good, hazard removal is bad. A lot of the, yeah, so, and the hazard immune Pokemon tend to be really good. And at what point do you say maybe spikes are the problem? Yeah, um, I, I think that kind of goes beyond the remit of what black and white can do. Yeah. Uh, in the same way that Skulls, you know, this this is something that is like uh, across gens. It's um something that, yeah, I think that's an issue in a lot of places. I, I think every and, Gen 5, I don't know about Little Cup, actually, but I think every black and white tier, including Ubers, has suffered from spikes. Yeah, isn't like black and white, is it NU or ZU? There's like literally no spinners. NU, and no... NU. Yeah, and the reason is that every bad UU spinner got taken to OU. Like, why is Don fan OU? Not because yeah. it was too good for UU or whatever, but because it was like, well, it has rapid spin. Uh, yeah. So the UU spinners went up to OU, then the RU spinners went up to UU, then the NU spinners went up to RU, and then you know in NU there are no more spinners left. So it's literally what's your spikes well, counterplay? No, 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 no. Yeah. It's War Turtle. Don't forget War Turtle. Yeah, yeah, it's War Turtle or no spin. And think about this: Charizard is the best Pokemon in NU, and it's regularly used without a spinner. So, yeah. I mean that's that that's Stealth Rock. That's not spikes, but uh, why was yeah. Scolipede banned? Literally just because it got spikes. Uh, and yeah. NT spikes, but uh, there are a lot of immunes. Why is Deoxys banned from OU in uh, speed and defense form? Generation after generation after generation. It's not because it's too hard to deal with. It's because it learns spikes. Yeah. I mean, this is something that I've... Obviously, this, this is not like an unknown thing, but that's kind of the idea behind that Rotom team that I built. Mm-hmm. In, uh, in black and white was basically the fact that Alakazam and Latios under uncontested spikes are really really fucking stupid yeah um, and so for those listening who don't know about this it's not like some amazing team but I built a size spam team that had the base form of Rotom the ghost Rotom the reasoning being that it's the only ghost that actually 1v1's Excadrill or at least Sand Force Drill because um, it resists Iron Head and it's immune to Earthquake and obviously Spin Blocks so you use it with like a ton of bulk and then enough speed to outspeed Jolly. And Rocky, Rocky, helmet Rocky Helmet to punish Iron Head. Split, yeah. And it just, it just sits on drill. Um, and even though it's not always going to actually win out in the long run, it'll eventually get drill weak enough with just Rocky Helmet chip um, that it can't 
survive like Latio Surf or or anything. So it just fundamentally never spins on that team. Um, just because, yeah, like uncontested spikes with Alkazam and Latios in black and white is just really, really silly. Um, yeah. So, do you think, think that think Latios and Al well, Alakazam absolutely would not be broken without spikes? Do you think Latios would be broken without spikes? Um, I don't know. It, it's hard to say, but it feels a lot more like the answer would be no, right? Yeah, I think it's quite hard to envisage what the steals would be in the tier mm -hmm. if there's no spikes. Because Ferrothorn Skarmory would immediately take a hit. At least Ferrothorn Real... still... He can still rock. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I'd imagine Jirachi would be a lot better in that meta game. So it, it's hard to look at it in a, in a vacuum because Jirachi gets better without spikes, right? Yeah. So does Scizor. So um, does Heatran. Actually, all of them do. So Yeah, it's, it, I, I don't know. I've got no idea. Yeah. But it, again, do, it does I, feel I, I weird that, like, Spikes has been complaining about in Ubers, in OU, in UU, yeah. Uh, yeah. Back, as far back as the current gen, actually, in RU, and, of course, NU, so... Yeah. Yes. It, it, I don't know. Maybe Spikes is just... That, no, I take that back. Uh, not Thunderous, but is Spikes broken is my next video. <laughs> just period. Not even, uh, yeah. not even in Gen 5 OU. Is it just broken overall? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think... Yeah, I, th I think it says a lot that a lot of my team building in the last two years has just been finding ways to push spikes as far as I can go. I mean, that's just good Gen 5 team building in general. It is, yeah. like the, um, like I've, I've got generally very, very low rapid spinner usage. Because they're um, bad, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, like, and like really, really high usage of like weird ghost sets, like um, eject button jealous and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. The idea of that one being that... It, it, Cheryl, that says like, a lot, actually, that you're willing to dedicate a team slot that's pretty much just going to like exist and then die without even doing much of anything itself just for yeah. spikes pretty much so, so, so the, the, the idea of that says the eject button jellicent um because of its typing it doesn't actually need leftovers or anything to beat things like tentacruel or most keldeo or polytoad so you can actually just go crazy with the item slot um and you see air balloon to try and spin block drill but if they iron head then earthquake you can lose all your hazards to drill. So you, you use this with hyper offensive Skarmory lead. Um, the point of eject button means that even if the drill predicts the Jellison coming in and it's like hard earthquakes, like yes, you take like 70% from that, but then you just get to turn it in, into momentum and go to something like a Sword Stance Landorus or an Alkazam or a Latios to just immediately revenge kill it. And you've still got the Jellison to sack later for a second spin block. So you, you basically guarantee two spin blocks all the time. Um, against like Starmie and stuff, you can eject button out to Scarftar to prevent it from spinning there. So, yeah, like like a lot of my team building this optimization has been just finding ways to keep spikes on the field like twenty four seven. Yeah, spikes are um, just uh, spikes make everything ridiculous, and yeah. <laughs> so it, it really does beg the question. Like, I don't know. It I don't know. Um, yeah. 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 All right. Is that everything? Have we covered every broken aspect of this monstrosity of a generation? I think, so. I think we, we briefly touched Alakazam. Volcarona would be the only other one. I think there are people who are still quite anti-Volcarona. There That's are. I mean, controversial take. I, I can get behind that. I don't I, mind. W which one? Not Volk, but Volcarona. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. I don't. I just never thought it was. I mean, yeah, it forces like the one hundred and one Scarfer and whatnot, but. I don't know, it's just so frail, and it struggles to ca coverage issues and all that, and it's hard to even get a safe setup with, like, really safe, I don't know, I just, I guess I, I never had a problem with it because I spammed Scarf Garchomp so much, but yeah. then but then even after that, then I have, um, th then I just never really had issues with it, just because it's easy yeah. to play around, mine is gems, yeah. of course, gems are you know, different entirely, but... Somewhat on the subject of spikes, that team that you did your last video on, the Scarf Chomp team, has yeah. been on ladder everywhere. I think people are very quickly learning how quickly the metagame has changed. Since yeah. That cool. Is that team like just loses to the Ferrothorn mirror, right? Uh, Skarmory is way worse. Pharaoh Fer is fine. It just, it just doesn't contest opposing spikes. Is no, no, it doesn't. Yeah, because it's, it's just cool. Alakazam. So it shows like uh, you can't just like use spikes and have abusers. You have to have a bunch of spikes immunes too. Yeah, 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 if yeah, it had yeah. a Gliscor over Landorus, it would probably be fine. Yeah. 
Actually, no, you know why it wouldn't be fine? Because Thunderous is broken. <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah, that team's not very good against uh, Thunderous either, is it? Yeah, how the times changed. Yeah. I think that's us, though, isn't it? I think it hit everything there. Yeah. Uh, Thunderous, Spikes. Well, I know Spikes and Scald are realistic, but I'm milking them for YouTube views because I'm a real sellout. Because this this is just a huge market that I'm tapping into, uh, so we need to be in on this, yeah. yeah. But thunderous uh, for sure is. Yeah. I, I would be interested to see where people stand on that, just because it's so, so dumb. It, it, it you know, I'm just gonna end up repeating myself, but I, I hate it. <laughs> yeah. So if if you had like full dictator power then what actually would oh like yes okay latios is gone keldio is gone thunderous keldio. is gone and drizzle keldio and drizzle yes because i don't think keldio is broken just because of rain okay i think it's too fast and strong and has too good coverage or its coverage is too good um yeah so latios keldio thunderous t drizzle scald and that would probably be enough for me, at least to start. No Reuniclus? Oh! Well, yeah, I mean, there's so much, sometimes you forget it, you know? Um, yeah? yeah, I would probably... That would be... Well, the initial wave, at least, might spare Reuniclus. But it would definitely be my number one thing to look out for after. Yeah. So... Kira well, I would just get rid of Kiram on principle. Uh, yeah. Like, I don't even just care if it's broken just, or not. Just, just to stick it to those there. idiots who were in charge who... Oh, my God. I cannot believe that. They didn't play. They didn't care. They, they really were just power tripping and being like, all right, I guess we... Oh, my God. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah so if, if I had full control over it, and I could do it all in one go, which would be impossible, but if mm. I could make it just this way tomorrow, I'd be interested to see what a metagame without Latios, Drizzle, and Scold would look like, probably. Mm -hmm. It'd be my three. Mm -hmm. But I don't think you could just do it in one go. Mm -hmm. My issue. Well, I, maybe... think, I think the only way we could ban Latios would be to ban it as a single thing and then have like several years of things just being crazy mm -hmm. and again I'm, I'm also saying this like i would be interested in seeing what it looked like with the option of going back to how things are now if it was bad well yeah you would always do that because you have the second vote or second second look rather in this case because yeah. it's being a dictatorship but, yeah but how far down the road do you have the second vote do you have the second vote after the first five bands S or after the first one oh. Well, the general period is six months. That's a pretty good gauge. Uh, so we're talking about banning multiple things together and then six months later having a revisit. Yeah, something like that. I mean, yeah. you, you used a really good system, actually. Because I liked how Coco used to do UU. Uh, and yeah. it's similar to how BP... Because well, the argument for BP was like, how about we just see what uh, if BP is broken with this newest complex ban? And eventually the answer is no. A, number one, it's... A, number one. Yeah. Number one, it's probably going to be broken anyway. Number two, even if we just ban it fully, and yeah, okay, technically maybe there's some non-broken form of baton pass, but does it really matter since it, the it's so outweighed by the existence of this move just to mess the game up? You know, so and, and I view the threats thing differently, and that's why I really liked how Coco did UU. Is he was like, you know what? I'm not going to bother with waiting to see if these ten obviously broken Pokemon are broken. We're getting rid of all of them at the same time, and then we're going to test them each individually. Uh, he had the benefit of a suspect ladder, obviously, because it was current gen. But that's I think that's a much healthier way to do it because you make the immediate metagame much better and you don't have to fight through months of idiots and red tape just to get something obviously broken out of the tier. Just get it out of the way immediately and then you can bring it back and if it's not broken, not broken. If it is broken, then you don't mess up the tier. So yeah, I like that approach more. Yeah, it's just it just doesn't align with modern day sort of 
smoke on principles. I mean, if you're being a dictator, then you can do whatever you want. So... Yeah, the, the issue is, yeah, who wants to do it? How do you convince people to let you do it? I just don't think it's possible. Yeah. I'm uh, just, I, I think... I, th- I think a lot of people have this view. Like, I'm sure you've heard, you heard this view when you were on council as well. It's very easy to be on council and get pessimistic about how hard it is to actually do anything when uh, everyone's yelling at you. It's horrible, and yeah. Quit, and, then, and then quitting council and all of a sudden finding it very easy to criticize again. Mm. Well, you know I mean? uh, what I would criticize when I was on council was my fellow council members' lack of desire to do anything. Yeah. So I, that was not I, quite it. Did Sorry. Even if they, even if they did want to do something, we can't. Yeah, that's the whole problem. So it's like, guys, we can't do anything unless all of us are on board. Why are you not on board? Why do you not care? And so, and then it's just like a, a useless. Uh, I don't even want to call it a puppet show because that would at least imply that they're being used to do something good, but yeah. they're <laughs> they're not, or do something rather, because they're really just there to take up space. I don't know. Pretty much. I, th- I think there's things we could improve. I would be a fan of exit polls after SPL just to see other people's th- thoughts on things. You, you ever um, notice how, yeah, in, yeah. In, uh, speaking of people hating the tier, you ever notice how uh, this year in particular was quite prominent that like half the players who wind up playing the tier are people who have to sub in? Because first of all, the people who play Gen 5 and SPL, there's only a couple of them who stick it out for, for the whole season. And yeah. then you just have a bunch of like, well, you've played the tier before technically, right? And then you have a bunch of people who don't really play and a bunch of subs and a bunch of, well, I guess I can try and learn it for the team's sake. And uh, yeah, and that's because there are a couple people who like it. And then most of the time it's people who can't stand it. Who, so they don't want to touch it. And then, uh, like, you, we mentioned the voter thing uh, way earlier. It's like, yeah, well, look at these people who are playing in SPL who are not playing because they are year-round black and white players, but because their team literally has no one else to play it because no one wants to play it, so no one yeah. does. And then when the tournament comes around, you have to field someone. So... I realize it's much more easy to be negative than positive, obviously. I do think there are cool things about Gen 5 OU, but this is about how we would fix it, so. Yeah. And then, there are times where I have really... There are times where Gen 5 has actually been my favorite OU metagame of uh, the... Well, at the time it was the 7, but uh, the 6 or 7, but... It, it, it never lasts. Where, where, whereas uh, in comparison, something like DPP, I pretty much have always liked. Um, yeah. So yeah. It, I realize it's apples and oranges, but that's the whole point. When the orange is rotten from the you know, inside out or whatever. What a beautifully colorful metaphor. Sometimes I amaze myself. Um, so, yeah, I would love to get to the point where we are genuinely asking if Garchomp is broken in OU. I think that would signify great progress. <laughs> Oh yes, yeah, 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 yeah. All right. I, I I worry if we got that far, we'd lose a lot of the player base. Well, a lot, that's a lot, of, a lot of the core guys who've been there, sort of through thick and thin, like Finch and Dice and Soulwind and guys like that. Like, are we going? Are we going to preserve? Are, are we going to oh, well. leave the tier as it is? for fear that they might not want to play it anymore. What about all... Okay, to counter that, what about all the people who don't play it because of how bad it is now? Yeah, I think that's a really bad point, though, Kevin. I think, like, surely you listen to the people that actually care about the tier right now rather than the people that could theoretically care. I know, that's fair. But look at all the uh, former... Yeah, look at the former players who have been driven away from it is the thing. Yeah. It's not yeah. people who have never touched the tier. It's people who have played it for years and go, "All right, I've had enough. I'm not touching this again." Okay, but you apply that to literally apply it to sports, right? Like, mm. I don't play basketball because the hoop's too high. Shall I try and teach the NBA to lower it so I enjoy basketball? Like, but you were never. You know, uh, <laughs> but, but you know what I mean. Like, like you you don't you don't appease to the people that aren't interested to begin with. What about the people who used to be interested and then left because it was so impossible to change anything? Uh, my opinion is they should have stayed on council and used uh, the power when they could. What power? You don't have any power. <laughs> the whole council doesn't have power. Yeah. The, the council is... P- like, yeah, I get it. I could have stood yeah. in greater solidarity or whatever. Yeah, it's, Scre- it's really easy to quit and leave and then complain about it for you to come back. Oh, you know how long I stayed on, though? Years and years. 
Yeah. <laughs> I would have hit 30 before anything happened. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, okay. We are over two hours, which is w- yeah, awesome on one hand. On the other, I'm really hungry. <laughs> let's wrap this up, yeah. All right. Leave. Thank you for coming on and arguing with me. And no worries. I think we're mostly on the same page. Mostly. Just, it's, just, it's the actual process of going through some of this stuff seems to be impossible with the way things are set up. Yeah, um, and Keldeo is actually stupid. So, we'll see. We'll, like if, if, you, if you convince your, uh, your fan base to use uh, Hidden Power Grass... Everyone, uh, the next person who I see using Choice Keldeo in a tournament is getting harassed in private message. Well, it was Scarf is okay. I think I think Specs is uh, doesn't deserve. Yeah, but level, but if you are using Scarf Keldeo and the rest of your team doesn't eviscerate Sand, then what are you doing? Yeah, yeah, that's true. All right, we're gonna call it there because I want right. to go eat pizza and watch Hot Fuzz like I do every night. Fantastic. Uh, no, all, right. Good plan. <laughs> all right, cheers, Kevin. Later, later. Thanks. Yeah.